This video is sponsored by Blood Servants, the upcoming cooperative hack and slash dungeon crawler. Head on over to the Steam page now to sign up for their playtest. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Windbreaker Podcast, episode number 13 for Monday, March 4th, 2024. My name is Marty. I am joined by Frost, Jamate filling in for Yahtzee, and of course, producer Eric behind the scenes. Uh, Yahtzee is off filming Adventures Knife Season 4 at a secret, undisclosed location with the rest of the adventurers, uh, uh, which was uh, funded uh, partly by your incredible patronage, your support on Twitch, your support uh, on merch via Shark Robot Store, and of course, via Super Chats on shows just like this one. Uh, you know the drill with, with Windbreaker. We got a topic. We're going to gab about it for the first half of the show. And then for the back half of the show, we're going to read your Super Chats. And today's topic, Unforgivable Gaming Sins. Loving thy neighbor. Or thy neighbor's wife? What's the bad one? <laughs> You're not supposed to covet. No, wife. thy neighbor's wife. You can't <laughs> covet. Uh, that was, you took my first sin, to be honest. I was going to say, coveting thy neighbor's game mechanics. Oh, uh, I, I like I just, that. I, And it's a quick one. It's, it's almost one that cuts to the heart because it was when Hearthstone got big and so many random games started doing card pack openings. And I was like, you know what? Fine. If it, if it works in your game, sure. But Paragon, imagine a MOBA, and the only way to get your items is by opening boosters, card packs. I was like, this what? Doesn't what is this? this doesn't even make sense. Yeah, this Why makes is no, no sense whatsoever. Absolutely maddening. The game died because Fortnite made enough money to kill it. It was unfortunate. But they, the, the, they did give all the money back. They so I, I was an early adopter of Paragon because I was a big fan of Dota. Same. And I played a lot of it. And I spent, you could spend like an exorbitant amount of money to get a pack where you could give people codes, like because mm -hmm. there were only a limited amount in the early days. I spent like $200 on getting my friends codes and when they cancelled the game they gave all the money they made back to everyone oh, that's... yeah so that's... i just randomly got 200 dollars into my account i was like sick let's go okay that's not see that's not bad yeah. um yeah yeah these are going to be the kind of things we're talking about uh gaming sins like design things mechanical things things that pop up things that some of them might be small things that just irk us personally some of them are sort of larger design problems as a whole we're not just going to be like bad graphics and microtransactions because I, mean, I, I mean for I, some people that is that is like i mean i kind of do like bad graphics though yeah, i love honest. microtransactions <laughs> yeah those are the only two i brought to the table guys I'm, i love you've, you've done me in i oh. love michael uh michael and all of his transactions uh so yeah i mean i figure we could just keep going around and just like fucking do riffing on a bunch of them because i just i wrote down a ton of them small things really specific things i also wrote down some sins i want to defend things i think people hate that Ooh. i will go to bat for well, uh, this, yeah. is, this is where we're gonna like split off and form a different church exactly by yeah. the end we just have three separate pillars of super chats going yeah. um yeah, my, my one just off the bat, which um, I think we could, if we want to go back to Original Sin, we can blame uh, Destiny, but uh, uh, cursor-based menus on controllers. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. What are we as a society doing when we're pretending our controllers are mouse and keyboards? Controllers aren't mice and keyboards. Controllers are better than a mouse and keyboard, and they shouldn't have to pretend that they're a friggin' mouse in games like Destiny, in games like Gotham Knights, in games like Cyberpunk, in the new AC games. What, like... Jamie, you're 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 a designer. You yeah. you you understand the ins and outs better than we do. Why did this become a thing, and is it ever going to go away? Um, I it hopefully it will go away. One of the problems is that 
you always start your initial designs for a specific platform. A lot of the times it was, you know, you start on console and then you work your way to, to PC or vice versa. And it seems like Destiny started on, well, it, I hope so, started PC, on PC. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's bring our systems in. But no, it is definitely a sin, mainly because it's not faster than just like grid-based switching with a, you know, your analog stick to move the cursor with your analog stick it's not quicker so if it was faster but it felt a little bit cumbersome i'd be able to forgive it i'd be like yeah okay it, it makes, makes sense, sense yeah it doesn't look no. it's just it, a it, compromise yeah. now it's like either you get the game and it's gonna have a horrible cursor based for controller or you don't get the game at all and i was like yeah. you're fine you know what i'll take it I'm, I'm used to it like on netflix whenever you get like oh what was it yeah <laughs> wasn't the original netflix like cursor based even though you had the remote no, I swear it was something heinous. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that might have just been like before, pops up before, and there's a mouse. Like their movement. first app might have been like, "Well, we're just used to the website, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna port the website over to the app, and you just yeah, have no. a mouse." Yeah, it's not it's not ideal, and they definitely could have done it in a way that was, you know, that would make sense on controller. They just don't didn't want to. Probably a cost saving thing, but yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of other games that have it. Yeah, it's uh, Hogwarts had it um, the other year, Gotham Knights. I mean, honestly, it's any of these games that have gear and like loot systems that feel like Destiny. Oh my Destiny. god, the issue is? Yeah, they all, they all have this thing. The modern AC games have that thing where it's just... And it's also, I guess that, that ties into the problem of I hate being bogged down in a menu in a game. Like yeah. I noticed it really when I was playing God of War Ragnarok. How much if if that if every time I grabbed something that would incrementally make me stronger, I would open up the menu and I'm like, what am I doing? Like this is supposed to be like the whole thing of these games was like we've created one interrupted shot that you, the player, will interrupt a million fucking times by pulling up your menu and being like, oh, Kratos got new glaives. Like what do we, yeah. like, I, I, it just I don't know. Like I get the itch that scratches, but that's not an itch I want scratched. Let me let it itch. Get your menus elsewhere. Um, uh, I didn't know you were going straight for like UI, even though that is a from someone who's who's like worked around in QA. Those are one of the biggest branches of complaints. It's just the UI, the UI. I'm like, why do you love this thing so much? Just hit play, get in the game, and look away. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess that's one of those like one of those things like sound design. A lot of times, where it's if it's working well, it's kind of the unsung yeah. hero. You don't notice, yeah, yeah, and you don't even yeah. comment on it. You're just like, oh yeah, it worked well. Whereas when it stands out is when I'm like, oh this yeah. Is and I get it. I get it from that that perspective for us to being like, yeah, you know, just like get past it, get back into the game. But when it's so intrusive to the actual play oh, experience, like yeah. Marty was talking about God of War, yeah. um, it's it's kind of egregious. And but that I think that's a systems issue, right? Uh, on top of having to use a cursor inside of the those menus, sure. it's yeah. that incremental nature of the loot. I, in my opinion, shouldn't have been in God of War. But then again, I think a lot of things shouldn't have been in God of War. I should probably make a video on that. But just, what about a son? Yeah. You shouldn't have had a son. You should just, shouldn't have you had should a son, just remained single so yeah, you could no. bang out in hot tubs. Yeah. Should have been a dog. No god. Yeah. Oh god. Just war. No <laughs> god. Just war. Yeah. war. Suppose, yeah. In the same vein of like Sunny Sin menu systems, it'd be like the card one of like, hey, look at all these microtransactions, all these things that you can spend. Here's the battle pass, season pass, and there's the play button. Skull and Bones yeah. did that to me. I was like, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Code yeah. of conduct. I'm like, for a pirate game, yeah. that just feels wrong. I I'm not going to rip some free speech in, but still. It's yeah. like, oh, you got to be a good pirate. You don't want to be naughty out there. <laughs> like, one, sure. of the, one of the things with UI as well, if I try to leave a game and like, you know, oh, I need to go cook food. I'm going to go close the game down. If your quit button is not immediately on your menu and I have to go into another sub menu to get to it, I am never opening your game again. I'm done. In that, in that Dark Souls. Yeah. Well, oh, Dark Souls has some problems. I'm like, like Elden Ring. I've played a, I've played a yeah. lot. Of, I've played a lot of Dark Souls. Oh, you may have just you've hoisted my petard. Um, <laughs> I'm, oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's horrible. I I don't see the process of like, oh, well, we want to try and keep people on our games. Well, I am actively trying to leave, so don't yeah, stop me I, then. I, I, like I've already you. made the decision. It feels like. Um... 
Okay, I'm going to try to not get arrested. Uh, sometimes I watch sporting events via illegal websites. Oh, no. Right. Sometimes I'm like, this basketball game or this football game, I can't get in my local area. So I need to w- stream it via something illegal. And you get to those websites, and it's just the Wild West. And it's like, yeah. there's just weird. You're like looking at the site, and you're like, what here is the window I need to click to watch the thing? I know the game is somewhere in this window but I don't know what it is. And then you click and an ad starts playing. You're like, did I click the right thing? Or did I click something else? And then there's a countdown and I'm like, Ooh, should I not have done that? And sometimes game menus feel like that. (laughs) where You're like, I just want to play. Like I've already, especially for a, it's egregious in a game that isn't free to play a game that you give money at the beginning. And then you get into this thing. You're like, I paid to get in here and you're still advertising to me. Like why, why is this happening? Why is the having fun button not right at the forefront? Didn't mm-hmm. the um didn't the new Call of Duty do that? It advertised you the game that you were playing and tell it go ahead and buy Fucking it. And you're like, I'm the playing it. Theater. My local theater. I went and I, I went and got high off the spice melange this weekend at Dune Part Two. Oh. My local movie theater, before the trailers start, have a preview for the theater. And I'm like, I'm here. Why are you advertising to me? I have come to the theater. theater. Like, they're showing me, like, look how soft the seats are. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm in the soft seat right now. Bill and Marty. Damn you. Like, caress the armrest. <laughs> like it's, it just, they're like, we have popcorn. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm aware. It was right at, the, right at the front. I walked right by it. I, I saw the See, I could have used one of those. I didn't know my chair could lean back. So if I'd had the preview, I'd have known. Until, you would have you would have fallen asleep though on the you, on the, the have, deserts of Arrakis. I wasn't watching uh, the deserts of Iraq. What? Arrakis? <laughs> that's the I, I, I was watching. Uh, that's a very Demon different Slayer. <laughs> it looks like Afghanistan. At least. I, oh, you were watching Demon Slayer. It. Gotcha. Yeah, I was watching Demon Slayer. No falling asleep during that, even though it did slow down. Just to uh, just to look back, do you guys have reclining? movie theater dude they've gotten so yeah. nice since i was a kid when i was a kid dude. it was just what you think of as like auditorium seating now it is like i don't know if i just want to like get a quick nap and i'll go dude. see the new glenn powell rom-com and just get a little get a little 90 minute snoozer in in terms of uh movie going um, experiences it turns out england is a third world country so i'm i'm, I'm coming over i'm hopping over because we don't we ain't got those reclining it's seats. absurd how comfortable yeah. seats are. yeah yeah no I don't it depends on where like, you are. They have beds Yes, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I get whole... worried that there's some stuff going on in those beds, though. Yeah, be careful. Well, change, the change the sheets yeah. every yeah. every time. I don't know. You, you, what, one can't be too comfortable in a movie theater, you know. No, <laughs> and I, I kind of my, my friends would always pay like extra for like big fancy ones. I'll take like five bucks, but the whole th- theater's mine. Absolutely, mm, chairs yeah. falling apart. You know, I like walk that. out without yeah. my shoes because the floors yeah. are too sticky. The main thing <laughs> is I want my eyes to see the movie. And my ears to hear it, yeah, and then I'm go. and then I'm good. Yeah, those are those are a close one and two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> need to be able to there. see and hear the film. But you know, previews of the thing that you're doing, uh, like, yes. uh, continuing to to sell you the thing that you do. That is, that that's that's even from? the trailer thing. I hate that. Like, and I get that's because like our attention spans have been completely fucking obliterated on uh, social media. But trailers that start with a three second sizzle of the trailer you're about to watch. It's like I already clicked on this trailer. What I'm are you already doing? watching it? Like I'm, wa- I'm watching it. Or it's like I'm we're wondering. premiering the trailer. Watch the rest of it online. I'm like, but I'm here. Why don't you just show it to me? Oh, like, look at that. Oh no. Yeah, I don't, it's it's um. Already it's, in it's, gaming it's... prisons. Wait, did I get put in a gaming prison? You're in you a gamer, gamer prison. prison. Look at yeah. that. Oh no, I'm in a gamer but, prison. Yeah. But the way I got worried when you said, "Oh no, that my internet died." I'm like, "Oh no, it's no." Happening. It's nah, when nah, it's when Eric was unfolding it slowly. Reminded me of old dial-up. <laughs> which is uh, honestly that that is one of the gaming sins i had is um my internet's fine my pc's a beast and it's it's just choppy all to hell like what's going on what's going on here skull and bones loading screens yeah. up the wazoo my character would get stuck in between transitions just idling then i'd go to quit it and the thing was quitting for like 15 minutes i went and had lunch come back it was still quitting still going yeah yeah, yeah. and it's yeah that's one of the things like i don't know one of the reasons like i'm i'm i just prefer to play on consoles is if the experience is kind of shitty that's on them like it's like yeah. oh you probably sent me a game that is not optimized mm-hmm. that that is not just working well here whereas if a game is shitty like not running well on my like admittedly not great pc part of me is like this this, this might be my fault <laughs> like i don't know who i don't know i can't blame anyone this might be my fault um uh, but yeah 
I loved it with um, what was it? Todd Howard was saying for Starfield, just upgrade, just upgrade your PC. And some guy on the Reddit it was like, he posted all of his graphics and he had the latest specs of everything. It was a yeah. beast of a computer. And he says, upgrade to what, Todd? To yeah. what? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Wait a year for new stuff yeah. to come out. Yeah. yeah. Go into the future and get one of those PCs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll do that. Yeah. No, so the, the choppy feeling of all that. Oof. Yeah. Are we yeah, going to beat up on on the on the UIs or what? What are like the actual down in the meat of the game? What are the things that they do? That uh, are you talk about like mechanically, mechanically, yeah, even like story tropes. Like to me, I've always despised the. Um, I have to follow an NPC that walks a little faster than I walk, but not as fast as I run. So I'm just there. Like, sure. All right. Yeah, I mean, I kind of despise that as. It just feels like that became a crutch that games have relied on to where it's like, well, this is ostensibly a cutscene, but we're going to give you a modicum of control during it. So you're going to just wander through this cutscene while we deliver exposition towards you. Mm. And it's, um, it, yeah, and, and it gets especially frustrating when you have those moments where, like you said, if there's not a dedicated button to match speed, you're like, this looks stupid. Like, yeah. what I'm doing right now looks stupid. Yeah. I just start circling the characters yeah. on board. <laughs> yeah. Every game does it. It's horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, circling them. One, one for me is, like, talking about dedicated buttons, is games where they have different buttons for things that don't require different buttons. So a, a common one for this is so usually if you're on mouse and keyboard, interact will usually be on something like F. Yeah. Um, Like, pick something up will be F, but then... In the same game, when you go and talk to someone, they'll put talk to the character on like E. So it's on a different button because it's a different thing. Yeah. But you are interacting with that person. So compartmentalize it and put it on F. So it's the same thing. You're never going to need to talk to someone and pick something up at the same time. So yeah. just do that. I'm like, why is this keybind here? Another one for me is I hate uh, like crouch or anything like that being on control. Because it's, I just, I hate how it feels. And I use like, I don't think I can put it in my cam. I use like a weird gaming Nostromo thing. It's hard to describe. It's like you a have gaming an ergonomic hand keyboard thing. or something. What's going on there? I'll try and lift it up. I'll show you. Where there? Yeah, yeah, I'm like trying to even picture it. This thing. Oh, oh, okay. There you go. So that's for your Got the left goes. hand. And yeah, right I, play, hand I play a lot of MMOs, right? So I need lots of fast focus camera. I need lots of um like fast access to buttons and it's got loads on it but it doesn't have control no. and so when i'm using that i can't use control so in default in um hell divers to use your stratagems it's like press can press or hold control and then yeah. do the taps i would have to lift my hand off of my device move to the keyboard and then start doing it it was yeah. really clunky but i think that's definitely a me problem no, there's a, in a similar vein, if uh, certain things are tethered to the L3 or R3 button, so like clicking in the analog sticks, specifically the L3 button, um, and I can't untether it, I end up accidentally hitting that so much because when like shit hits the fan, stuff gets intense, or if I get started, if I'm like a horror game, I will, without fail, when I hit that analog stick, I will press it in as well. And so, so I will, if that is use an item, I will use an item. If that yeah. is like throw my grenade, I will throw my grenade. And I'm like, I didn't want to do any of this. <laughs> if it's oh, like, yeah. like oh. I need to put this on a different button. That tied into, I guess that's the cause of the symptom I, I had written down, which is like, if my health is full and I accidentally press use health item, do not use me health nope. item. Oh, I'm yeah. Fine. <laughs> be aware of it. Be, uh, 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 <laughs> none for me, sir. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'll be fine. Like, it's like when, what is it? Like you don't have a, you just want a rest, uh, a gas station hot dog, you know, but you don't really have three bucks in your account. And they're like, all right, now it's a 50 buck hot dog because yeah, you're, yeah. you're overdrew. And it's like, you could have just not let it go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't like uh, when on FPS games where the aim down sights is on toggle rather than defaulting to hold. I hate like, Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's a weird one. Confused. I, I get it. But I think if you have those options, you should make them, like, in your tutorial, you should allow the player to pick what they're yeah. doing. It, this, that's where I show yeah. my hand as a bit of an extremist. I had one. It's absolutely not rational in any way, but I wish there was, like, for a specific genre, there was a universal uh, 
key key binding or control scheme, so to speak, because like I'm tired of going through three different shooters, and it's like your equip is on three different keys. It's like, and the flashlight should always be F, you know. Yeah. We should always jump with spacebar. Grenade is always G or whatever. But but then yeah. that just goes to more so like custom keybinds. If you don't let me customize the keybinds, that's that's on you, buddy. Yeah, that's the controller yeah. saying. If you don't let me remap, I it it really does me in. I do not like that at all. Because yeah, a lot especially of people if you're, if you're yeah. juggling multiple games at once, which you know partly might be an us issue given our jobs, but also like I don't know, a lot of people bounce between a couple different games, and if they have any similarity to them, then there are differences in controls. Like I was playing uh, like a dragon, Persona, uh, Final Fantasy, and Resident Evil Two Remake, all like within the same time mm. period. And every time I would go to a new one, granted Resident Evil, you know, is still a third person game. Uh, when I would get to those, when I'd get to a new game, it would just be like that Gandalf of like I have no memory of this place. Like why yeah. I have I've forgotten everything that this game taught me because I spent an hour in another game. Not not just that, but also accessibility. One of a, like a good friend of mine, she only has one hand, mm-hmm. and she cannot play games like God of War or The Witcher on console because she they do not allow for um, remapping of controls, and the game yeah. is completely inaccessible to her. Um, and remappable controls on controller is definitely something they could have done, you know, yeah. but they. They haven't, and it's excluded a huge portion of people. Accessibility is a huge thing for me. If sure. there are common accessibility options, like colorblind modes, as someone who's colorblind, you know, if you don't have those, I'm just like, what are you doing? You know, like, especially if it's a multiplayer game where seeing colors of enemies and icons and stuff is really important. I bet um, you loved Ruiner. Come play my red game, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> red game, oh God. Oh, man. Accessibility options, yeah, it's, it's one that people I guess don't realize until they they themselves are affected or somebody else is affected, right? But you know, yeah. it, 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 that can just mean the world to these people. Uh, yeah, and it's do you give indie games a pat? Like, do you weigh in terms of accessibility options? Do you like expect more from a first party Sony game than you would from? Yeah, a, oh yeah, if it's AAA, or... I'm I'm like, wh- yeah. what are you doing? You if do, it's yeah. AAA, I should be able to be in a coma and play your game. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the level of accessibility I'm expecting. Indie, I'm I'm more lenient. I'm like, I, it's a miracle you made the game. I get, yeah, it, you know. But uh, yeah, it no. depends on the the level. Like colorblind modes, if it's indie, I can forgive um, mm-hmm. because it's not something that's game breaking. Uh, I, if you are in chat and you are making a game and you are indie, have remappable controls for controllers and PC because yeah. it, it will take you a while to do but it will make your game accessible to a huge portion of people. So that's one I can't really forgive. I, I Unless it's an old game, you know, I, I don't expect to be remapping my controls in Beyond Good and Evil, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, but, yeah, it's funny you, you mentioning that. Like, that kind of reminds me of Frosty video the other week of uh, sort of advice that you'd give to indie developers making demos. Like, right. listen, these are, like, baseline things that if you don't include them, you're going to lose, like at least you if not like a sizable portion of of uh, a potential player base by being like well this isn't here i'm just gonna go on to the next one yeah, yeah it's, it's just like that like minimal line it's like going to any kind of diner i always get some eggs first to start with i'm like if you can't make these eggs oh i've got no there's faith no for the rest for of it yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, there's no like hope. the easiest one there yeah unfortunately same uh, thing with, opening yeah yeah the audio and whatnot that's always been an issue settings mm-hmm. uh, i don't I always feel like maybe people are being very irrational, right? But no, I do find that the the average player is more like picky with what yeah. they like in their games. So like, if it's if the audio is just one slider, what have you done here? Yeah, you know, it's it's layered, but it's just one slider. What can I do there? Small yeah. little sin for me. Uh, that thing where games um, you turn them on for the first time and the audio is blaring out. I'm like, why? Could why have done this why at, would like, you 45? err on the quiet side? Yeah, yeah. why not quiet? To, like. I, I just assumed, or was this supposed to be played through my TV? Why? Yeah. yeah. Why are you so loud? Yeah, their baseline has to be loud so yeah. that screens and you know devices that cannot go to higher volumes that yeah. is playable. I understand why, as a sound designer, I get why they do it, but I still get you know audibly flashbanged by these things. <laughs> but all like, the time. I, you can have it go louder. Just like start your game at fifty percent, and then the options mm. menu you crank it. You can crank it up to as loud yeah. as you want, but like. 
yeah, getting getting hey, <laughs> Tim Boyle hat. Maybe him. it's a it's a literal flashbang effect. They're sure. trying Let's to shock you. They're trying yeah, to yeah, you yeah. Let's can... get your attention. Yeah, I I had um there was one game I forgot what it was, but it was a very narrative heavy game, um with a narrator that like kind of follows you around and whatnot. But at the start, the first thing you see is a cider with audio, and they and the narrator's going, uh, in a in a quieter way, he's saying, hey. Can you hear me? And and you, you can't essentially. So you're moving this slider, and it's like, hey, how about now? How, how's this work? Oh, for you? that's clever. And I was like, yeah. okay, that's cool. It's like, yeah, get, you, like this is the level that you're gonna hear me at for most of the games to get used to it. And like, put yeah, me where you that's want really me. clever. Yeah, well, like, that's, yeah, that's a that's a good way to change. Like, has anyone ever done a jump scare within like a horror game with your uh like your gamma and your brightness setting? Yeah. You know how you start a game and you're like moving it up. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's an easy place for like a real a real quick fuck you from the yeah game. that's that's a great idea <laughs> i'd love to make a game um that was just menus like you have to oh. solve puzzles in a menu system and that'd like, be funny that would be it's just all Daniel Mullins did a lot of stuff like that in um in a few of his games um yeah but uh i'd love to make an entire game based around that that'd be fun yeah. and the what menu. was this thing this is a very niche thing it's probably not going to make much sense but um what was it a lot of sliders are made incorrectly. That's why it's sort of like at 100% volume and at 75%, you can't really tell a difference. But then you're like at 10% and 5%, it goes from I can kind of hear it to it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Where it feels like it's not an actual percentage. Like it's, yeah, it, where it's, it's like it's, it's, way too, it's too drastic. Yeah, I forgot what the name for that is. Some audio engineer will probably know. Yeah. Uh, or or um, someone who, who deals with sliders. It's called just lying. It's called straight up it's lying. Just like, no, it's it's a mathematical thing because like if I, if if I if you got like a bucket of quarters and it's just two quarters, if I remove one, it's gonna look drastically different. Whereas if the bucket is full of quarters and I remove ten, you won't really real, you won't notice it. Okay. That so I forget sense. what that effect is called, but that's why like at bucket, the bucket, of higher, quarters, bucket, uh, bucket of quarters, yeah, conundrum. Yeah. <laughs> bucket of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're at the at the higher end. There it is. Yeah, it's it, volume isn't linear. It's it's logarithmic, but it's you get linear sliders. Isn't linear. They display it's it as a, a linear. Yeah, linear slider. yeah. What does that mean? What's, what's, what's logarithmic? Logarithmic it means it like uh, comes with nice jams. And it logs. Butter. It logs and it's got rhythm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So like a, like a woodwind, game. like a woodwind of some sort. Woodwind slider. Yeah, the best yeah. kind. Uh, I've been uh, as I was talking about. I've been I've been playing a lot of been playing a lot of RPGs. So I have a couple RPG centric um, little pet peeves. One, uh, which most games have gotten past, but if I go to a store in an RPG and I'm, I'm looking at gear, and you aren't immediately comparing it to what I am currently wearing, and then if I buy it, you don't immediately give me the option to equip it and then sell my old shit. What are we doing here? Like, yep. what are we doing? Like, you need to make this. A, this is, I'm a consumer in your fictional store. You need to make this accommodating for me, video game mm -hmm. shopkeeper. Uh, that's one that annoys me. And then uh, also in RPGs, if, if, if I have a party and I have four characters and the game ends if the main character is downed. Oh, that to yeah. me is ridiculous. When I'm like, I got three people. They have healing spells. They have items. Like they can, they can throw a phoenix down my way. They can like cast a raise on me. Why is the game over just because of this fucking yokel? Yeah, that's really down in battle. You could yeah. argue that it's a perspective thing. Oh, you're playing from the perspective of this character. But if you actively have spells to save other characters on other yeah. characters, that makes no sense. No, it's silly. It's silly. Get out, get out of town. I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one that I noticed a little bit from Final Fantasy because it had this problem, but um, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna dovetail on the FromSoft too. Uh, if your game has a finite amount of save spots in the year 2024, like Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth, I think only has 12 save slots. So when you're saving the game, and I was saving like often because I was like oh, I'm gonna have to capture footage for for the bite size and stuff like this, and like, why are there just 12 save slots? Like, why, why can't we just have infinite? Like, what is the point of having only 12? In it? Like, it's not a memory card issue like it was on the PS1. Like, it just feels ridiculous to me. And that's dovetailing into FromSoft. I think having one save file that autosaves is, is bad. I think it's stupid. And I get yeah. that that's like, that's in the DNA of their games. I'm like, I think that's fucking stupid. Your so DNA is stupid. <laughs> From a from a dev perspective, uh, I'm not a programmer, but I was having this exact conversation um, with 
one of my programmer friends the other day um we're working on a game and he was talking about uh you know making our saving a lot simpler and making it so that we can really bring down the data of mm -hmm. how chunky these saves are because it's takes up a lot of space and it can take up a lot of um like space on your computer based on how big the game is and how much data is actually being saved so on Man, games like where that. you're calculating how many what items people have what spells they have available you know where they are on a huge map there's that's a lot of data so if you have an infinite amount there can be issues where the game can like save itself a whole bunch and then do it infinitely and then the game breaks because infinite is is bad well, that's you don't want to do fault. that in computing um so i get it but i agree that it shouldn't be like an arbitrarily small number like 12 it should be big that's enough right. what, like, what, what are you doing saving so much Marty? what do you need 12 saves for i'm, I'm me, like, creating a bunch of right. it was mostly for being able to go back and be like mm. oh i could capture stuff at this point of the game and this point of the game because they had like very specific so, capture uh, guidelines for pre-release mm. but it's just in my maybe this could be pure ignorance on my part which it probably is i just assumed save files were like 50 kilobytes it depends on the game and it like, is that an optimization the, thing they like, just take what? a picture yeah. of it <laughs> yeah i don't know it just doesn't seem that much it's it's definitely an optimization thing and like i said it depends uh, on the type of game and um how it was made what engine it was made in there's so there's so many factors you know uh, um, even though we the, have uh, you know game uh engines like ue5 and unity and godot and stuff like that the method on how we do these things isn't standardized gotcha. so some games could just break if they had 13 saves and sure. they don't know how to fix it and sure. to them that's a low priority list from getting you know another character's sure modeling and stuff like that yeah uh, it's just so uh, back uh, it's the... low priority because it's only weirdos like me who are angry about it <laughs> now, we're, we're back in those old PlayStation days with Tarzan. You could get a save by just like, remember this code now? For when oh, you, come and you, back. Got, you remember that? <laughs> you had to like write down. The worst was when it would be like symbols. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. draw this right. It was like, it's like banana, apple, orange, 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 <laughs> apple. Oh, and no. Apple and orange. I just put a circle. They both it's look like, exactly oh, no. the same. Yeah. <laughs> I've ruined Let's it. go back to those days. I'm keen. I yeah. want more secrets. I want more uh, extra busy work. I don't think busy work is a bad thing. I think we need more of it. I think I games like are getting boring because we're I not like doing it. it. I like it. Love it. Uh, I also noticed when playing those games recently, um, this is like a, this is a problem I could easily fix. I think if I just go into my console settings, but um, I don't mind a game with long cutscenes. I think long cutscenes. I'm a big Kojima fan. I don't mind just, if you want to sit me down for 90 minutes and story on me, then you can story all over me. Uh, when the console is like, you haven't touched a controller in a while, so I'm just going to dim. I'm like, okay, you guys got to speak to each other. You have to know I am watching this thing. Like, yeah, you have to I, know. What do you want? The Netflix thing? Are you still there? <laughs> I want that, Kojima to appear and be like, I just want to make sure you're paying attention. Also, I saw, attention? Web. I saw Web. I saw Web. Kojima. <laughs> Adam yeah. Web this weekend. Saw Madam Web. Nothing else. Oh, so, Cutscenes are a big one for me. Um, I agree. The game should be communicating and doing movement in the background during it so it doesn't go into idle mode on the console mm -hmm. but another thing um i have a friend which is this the absolute extreme of this hate i have a friend who will open a game and if it opens with a cutscene which most games do if it is not skippable he will immediately alt f4 and never open the game again that's a very rational he response feels like he should be able to do that he's there for gameplay only he doesn't care about story um even in story driven games he just wants to play um, and he'll pay attention if it grabs him. I know he's strange. I love him to bits, but he's weird. No, um, but I do as much. Even though I love cutscenes, let me pause or skip whatever I want. Yeah. Well, I'd like a pause. I'd like a pause yeah. on a cutscene. I don't like feeling like I'm locked in. And I also like if I press anything, I don't know if you're one of those that's like press. I hate that worry where I'm like, if I yeah. hit, which is I think less and less now. But if like if I hit pause, are we just gonna? Are you just gonna pause? Sometimes I'll be like, maybe I'll just back out to the Xbox menu. Yeah. Like uh, I assume the game is just sitting there oh, and no, everything's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah, no, yeah, I, being able to pause is a big one. Yeah, I can kind of relate. I'm very like, give me the gameplay, give me the meat and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it's not anticipated, because I would have never guessed the new God of War is to be so like cutscene heavy and like get moving and whatnot, especially coming from the older ones. Yeah, yeah. How does uh, would do, would would your friend Jay like count? what god of war does as cutscenes, because like it's all 
in engine and everything and like, yeah, like but it does start with yeah. like minutes of non-interactivity like that kind of thing so i know he loves minutes God of War. it's an hour um <laughs> he really likes it and i think it all comes it all comes down to narrative delivery right sure. so it, in my opinion most people get engaged first by gameplay rather than narrative a lot of people switch off and mm. so if you open your game with a cutscene, i think that's starting off on the wrong foot i think you should start with gameplay not knowing anything about the world learn a bit of it digestically through the world and then be given a big cutscene. and then you have they're like trying to give the context before they give the meat and i think yeah. you should give a little bit of meat and then give context to that meat and then you have a context for the context if does that make sense yeah what about those things where yeah. it's like tiny cutscene, and then uh you don't realize that it's transitioned and it's you and you're just standing there as a lot of stuff's happening and you're like all right is it my turn oh yeah uh, devil may cry 3 playing through it with kc uh for our thursday night streams uh without fail every boss fight would like halfway through the boss fight the boss would have some sort of a transformation and it would be mm -hmm. like a cutscene, and and the boss splits in half or pulls an extra sword out and without fail the boss would in a cutscene start to do an attack it would switch to gameplay and you'd have a quarter of a second before you got hit <laughs> and i'm like this is ridiculous and I like i guess it's like you know teaching you to always be paying attention but like there needs to be like a slight buffer after a cutscene, and yeah, just like make yeah. it you know like frost said you need to let me know that i can currently play the video game but yeah. then also don't just like put me on the offensive or some on are, the defensive immediately some are clever that a good framing during a boss fight where the boss would start doing that right but mm -hmm. the whole time the camera was framed in a way so that i can see my character's character still moving i'm still actually like actively there yeah yeah and, and i was more ready for that but it is about the context and that like be ready for it as, as was mentioned like quick time events i think I don't think people inherently hate them. It's just that it's like, oh, I thought I was watching a cutscene and now I fell. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do that yeah. whole bit I, again. Now I fell. The, again, with the, the, what I was saying about where you place a beginning cutscene, your expo exposition, I think the same for transitions. I prefer it from gameplay to cutscene. So yeah. Spider-Man 2 does this really well. They will take gameplay and movement and then transition you into, you know, certain animations that then roll into cutscenes. And I know this wasn't the case, but because sometimes they ask for uh, quick time events in that game, uh -huh. I would, if I felt like Spider-Man should jump, I would just try and jump and do things. And in those moments, it felt as if I was doing it. Yeah. And I obviously wasn't. And I'm sure a lot of other people have done this as well, but it felt really good. So I think it would be cool to have a system where instead of having a needed, you know, um, quick time event, let's say you're fighting a boss and it swings at you and he will, your character will always dodge. But if you try and dodge, you get like a bonus. I, I don't know, maybe more damage on the boss or something else happens. Mm, you know, there's yeah. a little bit of spice. And if the player is aware of it, I think that will allow them to pay more attention and naturally do the things they want rather than being told what to do. But yeah, it's quite yeah. Complex. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. it's like a small segment of just cutscene sins. Like when you go through, you beat the boss's ass and you come out of the cutscene with you getting whacked. It's like, it's like I was winning before this cutscene. I was just, his health bar is down to zero. Why did I yeah. just get hit? Yeah. Why did I yeah. lose? Yeah. Um, or, yeah, I've got I, another cutscene one. Oh, go ahead. Uh, which is the, this is kind of related to like 3D modeling. So when you 3D model, uh, everyone will know Tipos. Mm -hmm. um and if people don't know what why we do that it's because of animations and you go to default so that when you model you know armpits and underarms when you put the arms back down they're not clipping into each other and if they were modeled like this when you would pull the arm up the textures would stretch so you start mm -hmm. in t-pose and one of the things in modeling um and cutscenes that i hate is when you're watching a cutscene which people have slaved over for hundreds of hours and then you see a piece of armor like clipping through their body or like going through other items i irrationally hate <laughs> clipping um and so does my housemate um it's it's very frustrating i'm like oh but i know how much it would take to fix it but it still it, it irks me it gives me the gives me the ick as the chillum would say gives me the ick yeah. that is the phrasing now <laughs> i like having the ick yeah i like the ick yeah i don't uh i'm trying to think of like little things like that that really bug me like clipping and like those visual things don't i don't know because i don't um 
I think, I think I've said funny. this before on the pod. I don't like when I'm watching a movie or playing a game, I'm never like so absorbed that I'm like, I am there. I am in this reality and yeah, yeah. I have now been removed from it, which just might be like a flaw in how I observe things. So like those little, those sort of things that like a glitch in the matrix doesn't really bother me, but you know, there's, there's plenty of those smaller things that make it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm being talked to as opposed to talked with. Um, yeah. You know, the, uh, even as, as small as, uh, which we've talked about before a ton on here of audio logs. If I get an audio log and I need to sit in a menu to listen to it, as opposed to listen to it while walking around your world, like, why did you include this here? Like, why did you even, why did you even voice it? If I, if I can't listen to this, and especially if it's like one of those things where you collected a thing that is diegetically supposed to be playing that sound to you like you you clip you collected a tape or you hit a button on a on a speaker or something just let me walk around you know the 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 setting and still listen yeah i agree but also within the same vein i hate when i pick those up those things immediately start playing and i can't stop them sure (laughs) if if it's something like like it should be an opt-in almost in a way it should be like single button press to pick up and then there's a qualifier on the side of the screen where it comes up that says sure. press a to listen yeah and if i don't i can move on because i hate it when i'm playing those games um especially if they've uh not accounted for this your character will be talking or something will be happening and then i'll be exploring oh i'll pick up a log and then that will immediately start playing and they talk over each other and that yeah that in bioshock oh bioshock does yeah. this and it, yeah, it does. frustrates the hell out of me yeah why are they always so verbose? It's always these gut dang egghead scientists with a lot to say. If I was a guy, if I was a scientist and I was had a vocal uh, voice recording journal, I'd just be like, eggs, ham, lettuce, next time I'm at the groceries. <laughs> and then like, oh yeah, I needed to swap out the fuse, which I left in the, and then that's yeah. it. <laughs> I okay. love uh, I love how those audio logs by scientists will always go from like oh we're here we're doing it everything's great oh no everything fucked up oh god <laughs> every Resident Evil audio it. log ah. is like are we God we might be God oh no the the monsters the frog monsters we created uh, yeah everyone. I got yeah. I got to do that in the, in the game Vaporum that was one of the bigger voicing things I'd done and it's like yeah all right you're exuberant you're happy you're the lead scientist here it's like oh no we're the bad guys something bad's happening it's damn this sucks i can't believe the zombies turned on us i thought we'd be able to control (laughs) it's just exposition i i hate optional or locked in exposition if i want to digest more of your story i will digest more of your story souls does this really well you can go you can complete dark souls but pretty much any of them and barely take in any of the story yeah but if you want to and i think this is why you know, Dark Souls channels that digest, uh, like dissect the the lore, are so popular is because it is so not in your face and so hidden. Oh, um, and if a game starts and you know there's no cutscene, but I walk into a village and then the village elder comes up and he tell he makes me sit there for five minutes, <laughs> especially if I can st- I still have control of the character and I can move around. My brain's like I don't care because mm. you're making me stop. Like. Yeah. Can we go? Can we do stuff? And then most of the times I'll just alt it for. Like I'm, yeah, I'm done. I'll go play there's, Fortnite or whatever. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a power to like opting in. Like it, it makes it makes the player feel like you have agency of being like, all right, I I, I am choosing to uh, listen to this story and I'm choosing to read this and dig deeper as opposed to the game is forcing it onto me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys have uh, any any other ones, or do you want to move to super chats? We have a lot of super chats that can that are going to be for a lot of a lot yeah, of good spoofing and goofing. Yeah, I've got a bunch of quick fire ones, but I think yeah, they'll probably be covered. Or do you the think they'll, they'll show up? Okay. Surely, it can't be. See, maybe I'm just again irrational with with what I like because I since I play a lot of rogues, I despise uh, with the new loot gear system stuff where it doesn't tell you what the thing does. It's like makes you faster. <laughs> How faster? We talk, sure, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, it makes you slightly tankier. Like, in what way? In what way? I mean, that's the I, whole thing. Yeah. I don't know. That's also the whole thing. Like, when I was complaining about uh, God of War Ragnarok, how every time it'd be like, oh, a plus uh, 0.5% extra frost damage. And it's like, this is meaningless to me. This isn't, like, to me, getting gear and getting new, new loot and new equipment is exciting when you're like, 
there is a tangible difference. I could see this now. I could see this in how I'm playing, how much damage I'm giving, how much damage I'm mm-hmm. rece- receiving. And when you get into that crazy minutia, you just can't. They're not substantive. No, there's no consequence for them. And you're yeah. better off not doing it. It actually does damage to your game. This is one of the things loot shooters. I, I mean, I made an episode damage. on this. <laughs> loot shooters just don't get this. They think if you give people stuff, they'll be happy. And that's not how human reward works. Like yeah. how we. Not wrong, rewarded. but I'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's the equivalent of like you get excited if you see if you find a dollar in your pocket. You don't get excited if you find a penny in your pocket. Like if I reach in my pocket while I'm doing laundry and I'm like, oh shit, a dollar? That's cool. If, if I reach in my pocket and I'm like, there's a penny in here, I'm like, why was this in here? And you have, yeah, context- contextualize it. Be like, oh, it's, you see, it's a very rare misprint. And it's actually yeah. worth all this much. <laughs> but and that's why like that, that last one was sort of I despise in looter shooters when they give you the mandatory legendary. I'm like, that's not legendary. That's not rare. That's not no, rare. everyone's yeah, got yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. You had Stupid. to say that. I'm your boss. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah it's it's all about it there's okay the coin example is a really great great one because you can have it be two things you can be like well if you find a coin in your pocket but it allows you to teleport well that's that's, that's cool that's a good point but again if you're like this coin's a misprint and it's worth 100 grand but you have to go on this big long journey to go hand this yeah. in and do this stuff which will lead you to more content then that's entertaining but loot shooters are just like yeah 0.5% frost damage is it's just yeah. So I didn't even know it could do frost damage. That's fun. <laughs> I feel yeah. bad every time frost damage is the, my go to that I complain about. And I feel bad whenever I say that around you because it sounds like I'm just mad at you. And I'm, I'm not just mad getting at you. stronger. Yeah, yeah you're just getting yeah. strong. Your damage is 5. up by 0.1%. 5. 5. Really quick, do you guys still use cash? Like physical cash? Like uh, Yes. I, cash? I, hit, I hit up the taco trucks and sometimes the thing's not working. So Yeah. yeah. I still like uh, carrying cash yeah. around. Lampy was surprised I still carry cash. I still carry cash because there's, like you said, certain small things like that, like like food food trucks and everything. Also, um, there's there's certain dive bars I like that are cash only. Yep. I I will <laughs> happily get cash out if it's like a local business and you know, like they can't. I mean, it's very you know easy to get card machines nowadays there's loads of products that allow small businesses to use them Mm -hmm. but if they're doing it for whatever reason i'll happily you know there's a stall at the christmas market i'll get some money out for them and like do stuff but one of my pet peeves is if i walk in this isn't games but if i walk into a store and you don't have prices on your products i will walk out oh that's because i i hate it i'm like one you're making me walk up so that to ask you so that when you tell me the (laughs) price People who are socially anxious feel guilty and will buy the thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's scummy as hell. Cool. Like I was in Glastonbury, which is a place in England, and there was this these beautiful lamps. They were like stunning, so stunning to the point where me, someone who doesn't usually give a fuck about lamps, was like, "I want one of these lamps." No prices. I'm out. Uh, you're not getting my money. See you later. Yeah. Oh, Bye. then the the game equivalent of that is like that five different currency things, and now I can't keep track of the prices. <laughs> Yeah. These Absolutely are great. just real life sins. Yeah. Listen, if you're selling a burger and it doesn't come with fries, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? I'm not paying extra for fries. For 10 bucks? What? It's what do you mean? Fries. It's five guys. Five guys? Maybe you should pay. <laughs> maybe you should fire th- three of the guys and just make it two guys. <laughs> do we need all these guys? Do we need two all guys, these guys? And fries. Five, two guys? Five guys is ridiculous. Five guys is a, is a Ponzi scheme. People out here paying. What's a Ponzi $20 scheme about five guys? I educate It's me. like $20 the, the for a hamburger. Thing. Oh, is it? Is it? I, ain't, I haven't been in a long time. That's don't go there. Don't go there. The okay. guys are pocketing that money, and they're probably they're funding the terrorists. Yeah, I don't think sure any one of the guys is pocketing them. <laughs> the other four guys are like, oh, why do prices keep going up? No idea. <laughs> oh know. well, one guy burger, too many fries. <laughs> you want fries with that? Because it definitely does not come with it. Um, excellent. All right, we're jump. We're we're jumping in a lot jump, of super chats. Uh, right off the bat, uh, Ev- oh, remember, uh, uh, thank you everyone who's already donated. Uh, who who will donate? Um, I believe our current funding goal is, I don't think we have a current funding goal. Our current funding goal is uh, everyone's salary because uh, it turns out running a, a business with uh, over a dozen full-time employees and several uh, contractors and freelancers is very expensive. So thank you all so much. That is our funding goal. Um, Evan M, supported over on Ko-Fi. Thank you so much, Evan. That was yesterday, but I don't think anyone read it yesterday because we didn't have any sh- uh, uh, streams yesterday. Uh, Jewel Rao, a new member in Tip Char. Thank you so much. Jewel uh, Paul. $2 dono. I hate waifus in video games. Paul, get the f- 
fuck out of here. I mean, uh, there's that there was a trend. I think it's kind of lightened up a little bit. Oh, so much fan service, right? And I are was you like, anti fan service? Uh, to to the detriment. Yeah. And to yeah, at some point it's like, all right, I don't want anyone walking in behind me while I'm playing this. Sure. And it's always it's always super unfair to to the ladies because it's always like big bosoms and and big bear asses. Meanwhile, the male characters are like, oh cool, he's a big bear, and they're like this one, he's a monster of sorts. And yeah, no, the women, it's like little fangs, big tits. Okay, yeah, it's kind of boring. If anything I else, yeah, it's just kind of boring. I respected that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth went the fan service route with the uh with I think are you literally already showing it Eric that's incredible. Uh it went the fan service route with the with the uh mm -hmm. the bikinis and the beachwear for Aerith and Tifa and Yuffie. However, also you can get shirtless cloud which is fucking washboard abs and you can there also you get Barrett in a sailor suit which I think is great. Dang, you don't yeah. get like naked Barrett but you get Barrett in a sailor suit who I think See, looks like game 18 like, plus cuz that's that's hot. Like oh, see, be. I, I believe it should be it should be equal. The women should get some grotesque skins as well, and the men should have some where they're just like in uh, speedos. Sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just options, right? Like if you're if you're playing an MMO or something, and all, the same exact gear looks like a massive chest plate on a dude, but it's a bikini on a woman. Yeah. Just allow me to pick and have my muscled out roid freak in a bikini. Yeah. And Absolutely. you know, plate on my female character. Just let me choose. Oh, we ask for. Is it too mm. much? Uh, flop with a four ninety nine dono. Thank you so much, Flop. After last, after the last design delve on hel uh, health bars, the secret second health bar, uh, if without fanfare, is the worst sin. Nameless boss. That's actually two bosses. Do you, uh, yeah. yeah, too much messing around with the health bar was a bit annoying. It was a thymesia where it's like, hey, look, you hit them, they lose all this health, but then you have to like do this other thing so that they could that, that it stays gone. And I'm like, okay, I'm, like, I'm just playing with your, I'm yeah. dibbling health bars here. Yeah. Like, it has to be something that's like clever. Part of the story. Like the, so, um, the headless the, ape. what's he called? The guardian ape? The, the, yeah, yeah. The, the ape from Sekiro. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, like subversion of expectations. And that health bar, second health bar is earned. Yeah. Um, but it's, if, if you, destroy a boss's health the, the worst one is when they have five health bars and they're this long and you take down one and then below it is another one just a different color and it goes down yeah or it goes going. yeah it's like we're gonna start green and then we're gonna go to orange and then we're gonna go to yellow and then we're gonna go to red and we're like what it's is like when do nonsense. you end it doesn't make it feel any less gargantuanly huge like just yeah. just stop at that point don't have a health bar you know, yeah. just or have the health bar just be a, a full border around the screen. One, yeah, one big one. Tight. It looks like a Mario Kart track, and so I know how far I. I am. would actually <laughs> really like that. <laughs> um, yeah, and the uh, the guardian ape thing feels like something you can only do once. Like that is a like a sleight of hand trick, or just like a surprise that doesn't work if you do it again. Which the, I don't no, you guys, like you guys say surprise, right? but I was with Amy recently on that one and we'd already like what goichiro or whatever his name has yeah. got like three health bars no that from software it is not sneaky with like oh here comes another one like no damn you, you. cut his head you off though no, you don't expect that, that means nothing is, that means nothing he, to me he falls on the floor and takes 20 seconds to get back up like it's not like he goes into a cut scene and then he gets up in the cut scene yeah, but the like fog never left like, or anything. I was like, until I can see that, like it's defeated, and I can actually walk out of here. I'm like, no, it's gonna, it's gonna come up by. It doesn't give the splash. It says, "Pray whatever it says, defeated," and then he he comes back up. So now he's just yeah. lying. I do know. agree. They do do double health bars in in Souls a lot, or you know, push into a transition period sure. where you know Genichiro pulls a sword out of his face or whatever. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say his ass, and I was like, that you shouldn't put a sword. I was gonna say ass, but yeah, uh, it might, yeah, you know, it. samurai on a cob. The kids are here. Sure. I have the cop. Jesus. Uh, Sir Arthur, thank you so much for the dono. Uh, I can't be here live, so hi, me from the future. Sorry about the mess. Uh, Sin, poorly planned checkpoints can make a difficulty spike feel like a chore. Uh, yes. Oof. I feel like if... I don't know. If your thing is... I, I get that Like the point of a gauntlet might be, can you do the whole thing? But if at a certain point, if I've learned the beginning of it, and then I that feels like busy work just to get to the middle of the thing that I am trying to learn, oh. it feels like that's just punishing me for trying. Right, yeah, the boss rushes. I get that. To me, yeah. uh, I don't mind it too much, so much as when the checkpoint is the only way to save. 
I'm like, oh my gosh. I haven't seen yeah. these in years. Yeah. 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 Like imagine imagine if all your progress like disappeared if you didn't get to the next bonfire and in, in, in a Dark Souls like just gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like it's the Ori in the Blind Forest idea. Imagine oh, if yeah. all of your progress was deleted because you forgot to put down a checkpoint, and it was <laughs> an hour ago. It's like, oh well, I'm just going to close the game then. Yeah, I'm not yeah. coming back. It's, what a great game! It they, ended they, there. Learned, they learned that. <laughs> like this, they removed this, that system in in or in the Will of the Wisps. The second one, yeah. Forest is going to stay blind. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's uh. That feels like almost. I guess part of the checkpointing one feels like punishing the player for experimentation which is something i was i was talking about on the stream the other day uh bloodborne uh, as much as i love bloodborne the blood vial system feels like it punishes experimentation and punishes trying everything uh, it's a terrible system it's yeah. garbage yeah, it weird. there's um, a reason they haven't done it again like it's yeah it's bad i want to make my i want to make my game designer ranks all estes flasks video Oh, because that's, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah, because I've got lots to say about how Souls have done all of the, all of the different um healing and blood vials is by far in garbage F tier. Yeah, don't do this again. That's why. It, it, what was it? Yeah, they they keep saying no. We're not gonna just port it over to PC. We want to remaster it or re redo it. Good and then there was Heather people like, why? Why would you do that? Chance. But Miyazaki was saying, like, be well, new tech. We can get away with new stuff that we couldn't back then. I was like, let him redo the blood vials. Let him. A hundred percent. Just leave like, him worse, though. Oh, God. There's only a finite number of them in the game. You have to go into the swamp and get them. There's only one. There's only one, right? <laughs> one and blood it's vial. a big one. You get to chug on it like a sunny day. <laughs> I, I would say, well, well, one of the things with the remaster is I could be wrong, but I've heard that the physics system is tied to frame rate. And if you uncap the frame rate, the game breaks. So it's basically never going to get ported to PC. Yeah. Because of that, unless they redo the whole thing. Um, yeah. But I could be wrong on that. But yeah, I I what think Blood like Vault break. They ruin the game for a huge majority of people. Um, yeah. In my, I mean, it doesn't exist anymore. But my old Bloodborne video, I spoke about this. It was a huge portion of my video. Um, maybe I should just make a whole episode on it, or I'll do that ranking one. I don't know. But it, it ruins the game for a huge portion of players, and it doesn't affect the people at the top. And they are the people who say, well, it's not a problem for me. It's like, yeah, but you're not bad sure at this game, ugly. right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, another... Um, I, I think they've fixed it since then, or added new modes since then, but Marvel Snap at launch, um, every match was a ranked match that if you lost, you would go down in rank. Uh, and so it uh, kind of like encouraged you or discouraged you from experimenting with new decks. You know, you'd find what you were comfortable with and you'd lean on that because you didn't want to experiment with a new deck that you weren't sure of. Because if you did that, you would just get creamed a bunch. And then as you're learning how to play the deck and then lose a bunch of ranks and then the season would end and you wouldn't get all the goodies or whatever. And so It like, shouldn't be visible, in my opinion. I, a lot of people have a problem with skill-based matchmaking and like hidden MMR. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, one of the arguments is, well, I don't want to have to try every every game. You know, I, sometimes I just want to turn my brain off. You know, yeah. Um, but depending on the game, you know, just go play a different game. It's making a fairer gameplay experience for a huge majority of people. A lot of the people who complain about skill based skill based matchmaking are people who are already very good at the game and want to just shit on bad players, and that's yeah. what they want to do. Um, skill based matchmaking uh, makes it a lot better for the majority of players and that's why a lot of people use it and having it be visible like you said makes you think oh well i don't want to experiment i don't want to try a new character in this moba or i don't want to do this because it's going to ruin my rank mm -hmm. you know and that's why a lot of mobas and competitive games like this have ranked modes and you know casual modes but in those casual modes they still have skill-based matchmaking it's just invisible it's a hidden mmr yeah, but it, what it should have done there is at least separated it because in Marvel Snap you can make decks, right? So you should have yeah. hit an MMR for the separate decks that way. If Marty's like, oh, I want to try these new cards, it starts them over from the bottom. Mm. And then if he's like, oh, this did pretty well, I'll, I'll, I'll make it my main deck. And then, and then you know, over there. You build yeah, up like a new MMR. Yeah, kind of like deck. I think Dead by Daylight had that issue because like you could play, you could only main, you could main one killer and that was your MMR. And if you wanted to, hey, I'm going to try this new killer while well, you were stuck at that new mmr right so it's Yikes. like imagine uh going from your main role mmr to your off role 
Mm. And, and now you're like, oh, dear God, I don't even, but yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I think that was just poor implementation. Yeah, sure. that was something I, I'm relatively sure. I mean, I stopped playing after a little bit, but I think at some point they added like an unranked mode or just like a, hey, fuck around with your decks here. Don't worry, it's not going to affect your, your battle pass score or whatever. Yeah. Um, gotta love a battle pass score. Uh, <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Urban M25 Zoichi, thank you so much. Quick and dirty ports with mouse emulating game pads when porting to PC or locking frame rate because you can't be bothered to optimize for consoles. Um, it, it feels like we've almost taken a collective step back in terms of our ports, whether it's uh, PC to console or console to PC. I feel like more and more we're hearing high profile PC ports that are wonked out at launch give and take from, no from triple a from triple a uh publishers would you say like give or take? it's give and take no like i feel like we're hearing more about bad ports but but before we wouldn't have heard of the port it just wouldn't have come through oh okay yeah so it's less of a percentage thing and more of just there's just more of them now but, so but, yeah yeah there's, yeah there's more so there'll be more to complain about mm -hmm. that's what i figured like bioshock on the switch is horrible but it's either that or you don't get bioshock you know yeah what I mean? I mean, that's what, yeah, anytime there's like any, any game, I know people are playing like Doom on Switch, and I'm like, if this runs like shit, what did you expect? I don't it's know. All, it's on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mortal Kombat? New Mortal Kombat on the, the Switch? Mortal Kombat, that was funny. That was really you're like a big good. thing of poo water, but you're yeah. like, well, you want like Mortal poo Kombat. Water. <laughs> poo water was good. Um, yeah, I just don't, aren't, aren't, Jay, aren't ports just like right click save as dot PC? Fuck no. Pop? <laughs> you no, know, you gotta go it rename and then change dot yeah, change dot PS5 to dot Xbox. No, it's oh like when God. I get it when I get an image and it's a web B image, which let me let me see. The one thing I don't like, these web P images. I don't know what those are. <laughs> I agree. I, like I will them. agree with that. Yeah. Whoever created say, those, you do not get out try of here. Try them. Put them. And why did so many okay. PNG websites have them saved like that? It's not a PNG. I came here for the PNGs. I, I want the that big PNG. Games. Like you could just, Porting like... games is a massive undertaking um, to the point where a lot of games will just make games for PC nowadays and then if they make a bunch of money they'll start porting it because it's in a lot of cases depending on the engine you're using it's like building a new game Sure, and that's not um, ideal, not good uh, and a lot of the times not profitable you know mm -hmm. uh, in so that's why they need to get profit first but yeah I get it I, I don't get like the the frame caps I get, like, a lot of the times, most of, most of us can't see past 60 frames. So what's the point? You know, like, just cap it at 60. I, I can. It's, it's a curse. Oh, no. I can't. I've got, like, a really high refresh rate monitor, and it just, like, doesn't affect me. I guess oh, I've just yeah. got slow eyes. Yeah, I've got slow eyes, too. I've got yeah. these big Coke bottle glasses. Uh, Dower Dodger with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Dower Dodger. Endless menus should earn you premium seating in hell. Oh, I thought you were going to say premium currency. Like they should pay me <laughs> for for these premium horrible seating menus on transatlantic flights. Uh, uh, yeah, endless endless menus. What are we doing? There's the, we used to be a country. We used to, to be make. We used to make something. Uh, Hunter Roge with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much, Hunter. Uh, here's an easy one for you: an escort quest where the escortee walks slower than your run speed and faster than your, uh, and or slower than your uh, walk and faster than your run speed. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about escort missions as a whole? So that's less the, um, like for us, you were uh, lamenting the ones where it's just like you're walking through a city if, alongside someone yeah. giving you exposition. What about needing to protect? Uh, a, a helpless NPC. Oh God, that's the worst. Because I was like, I'll kill you myself if you don't if you don't come with. Um, I want them. I want if the situation's dire, act like it's it's dire. All right, number one, and then number two, I hate escort quests. Well, no, I'm, they're like follow me, but they won't move until I go. Like, I have to go first. I'm like, where yeah. am I following? To you just yeah. said follow me, but I'm the one that has to be in the first. I'll follow from not the how rear. Following works. Yeah, yeah. absolutely not, not how follow. follow. Uh, As, escort missions, they can, they can be done well, but at that point, I think the, the character itself needs to be almost godlike, you know? If yeah. they're delicate, I can't stand As, them. I am currently making an escort mission game, so oh. this is close to my heart. Um, and we've been thinking about a lot of ways of how you make escort missions fun and what makes them bad. And one of the things that I feel is that a lot of the times in escort missions, you have specific game systems, and then when the escort mission is added this your goal changes and it mm -hmm. becomes something different and that 
I think is bad and what gives this harsh like change and what people find as a distaste. Also, their fail state um, usually comes a lot quicker because the creature or whatever you're protecting is slow. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it should always be attached to once you are escorting this thing, it stays near you and your new fail state, which is the same as it was before. So let's say in a 2D stealth game, if you are captured, it's not that you die, it's that this creature dies because it's whatever's chasing you is going to go for this thing you're escorting because it's yeah. clearly weaker because you're escorting it. Um, so you're keeping the systems the same. You're just adding new stakes. And that's what I could make them think would make them entertaining. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll see in practice. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is too, is like, do you have a bond and do you like really empathize with the thing you are escorting, whether it's another person yeah. or a creature or anything? Um, and I think the ones that do it well, like in uh, Eco, that whole game is you escorting a, a, the, the Princess Yorda. And oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you like the bond between the two characters is so strong, right? It right from the get go. And like the core mechanic is, is holding hands and like you are guiding this character, literally grasping onto them. And your save points are the two of you sitting on a bench. And when you reload a save, you've like fallen asleep on each other and you kind of like wake up from there. And so it's like, you, you get this like very strong. I will do anything to protect this character. Whereas in a lot of games, it's like, they'll just toss someone at you and you're like, well, I have no, I have no skin in this game other than, literally getting to the next level so i guess i will try to protect this yeah. person yeah so it's as yeah. much the dress up as anyone anything else one of my favorite escort missions and they've done this in wow is like when the character has a set path to get through and there's mm -hmm. going to be a, a set amount of dangers and whatnot but you can go ahead and like get rid of it all ahead of time instead of just out. like yeah. they're constantly coming at me you know it's it's more like a just clear it out for them but the one in wow is a very drunk egotistical pirate and you're killing everything ahead of him and he gets through and he's like yeah uh, no dangers that I can't take. And he's just stumbling through and having a good time and I'm just watching him yeah. puke around the corner and I'm like, well, <laughs> you're kind, you're, I'm like, you're kind yeah. of amusing. Yeah. yeah, it has to be fun. Simple as that. Yeah. Uh, Jewel Rao, thank you so much for the dono. A gaming sin is not being able to play certain big games on PC or a horrible PC port. Sad face. Also not being able to pet a dog or a cat inside of a game. Cough, cough, Nintendo, cough, cough. 100%. It feels like outside of Nintendo, we are entering a paradigm where like most games are getting PC ports. Uh, maybe it's a few years later. Like I'm sure Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will come to PC eventually, uh, probably not for another year or two. But um, with Sony finally making the plunge and seeing success by their games and something like Helldivers launching day and date on PC, I think that's um, we're only going to get more and more. Whether the quality of the ports are there is uh, another story. Agreed. Hopefully the quality is there. Uh, Old Hunter, thank you so much for a five dollar dono. Massive difficulty or grind spikes near the end of a campaign? Let me finish your game. Thanks, fellas, for holding down the fort while dads are on a work trip. Thank you so much, Old Hunter. How do you feel about that? What what should the end, should the end of a game be the the hardest point in the game, or should the end of the game sort of be a come down? Uh, I'll see what it shouldn't be is an extreme divergence from everything else I've been doing sure. thus far. Uh, Evil West, yeah. I, I thought it was pretty pretty good. But then in the end, the entire boss arena was like, this guy doesn't move. He's a little, he's a little like, boot-scooting cowboy. He ain't a hustler. Mm -hmm. he, he ain't rolling over these holes the way that they've assigned now. I'm like, this is just so out of, just out of left field. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure what this was. I'm not sure what you're doing here. It's so I don't those, mind like, a, It's a final exam, but you're giving it on a course we didn't take. Like, yeah, why yeah. Are you giving like, me this is your, your, your final this is a math class. Why are you giving me a literature yeah. exam? This, yeah, uh, this got some calculus for you. Yeah, spell it. Uh, like awful. Yeah, no. Um, what was it? I think it was because I'll take a I'll take a power fantasy near the end. Where you just completely demolish uh, the end bit, mm -hmm. or I'll take a like, damn, this is the hardest fight because it is, you know, and that's that's what you were leading for. But just yeah, yeah. Don't don't divulge too much from whatever it is that you were building up to. How, uh, savor it and have some respect for your ending that's, mm -hmm. all, that's all I want have respect for your players, do testing so that the majority of your testers could get through it with a fair challenge and don't yep. try and balance it so that everyone is going to have a hard time, some players are just sick nasty at games and will absolutely demolish your game regardless that's so funny. stop trying to make it a big challenge for them it should be, you know, for your your average player because those really good players, they're going to get to the end they're going to want out the boss and still think wow, I am the tits you know, this mm. proves it. I just let them be the kids. The you know? Do you it think? Do you think? Because 
and maybe this is unpopular i feel like a lot of games don't have an ending they more so just have the thing they put at the end of the game it feels like this kind of i feel like you made this at some point in the middle of, of development and just went you know what that thing you made just put that at the end we have nowhere else we want to put it yeah do you mean like narratively so, or like not narratively i feel like they, well. they do their best yeah, mechanically where it's, it's like because uh, the tutorial modes aren't the first thing made not not always no, right the last, yeah. i feel like the endings aren't also the last thing made i feel like they're just kind of like we made it and stick it at the end well yeah and sometimes yeah. you get to that ending like the the boss of the original half-life the final boss you're like what the fuck is this, this is so different than everything that came before it like that is one of those things where it's like a legendary game that you get to the end of and you're like why am i fighting this thing like where did this challenge come from? Like, oh, fuck me. That was um, the Joker and Batman Arkham Asylum, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, when he gets all, like, buff and he takes yeah, the like, like, juice. You're like, what, what, what are we doing? That? What what's happening? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Silly. Uh, Dower Dodger with a $2 dono. Thank you so much, Dower Dodger. My stars. Marty's a sports pirate. Straight to jail. Daily, they Careful. Will, they will find me. I did that during the Mayweather fight and uh, almost lost a Minecraft account. Oh no! Um, From Russia, it said it was Putin. <laughs> it was Putin. Putin loves it, loved your little Minecraft careful. world. Uh, Chris S, thank you so much. Reupping in tip jar and superb owner also reupping in tip jar with the message. How about games which constantly steal control of the camera from a player at inopportune times? Alan Wake one's baddies got so so many cheap shots out of me each time the camera spun around during combat. Yeah, having a game take control of the camera is one of those um, you better know what you're doing kind of thing. Like, yeah. if you're going to take control, like, you, you, better, you better have a firm hand on the wheel. Otherwise, it could quickly become annoying. Yeah. What was it? Solstice, I think. It did that, um, that um, stationary camera, right, mm -hmm. as you transition through scenes over and over. But it would do this thing where, like, you're going in one direction, the camera swaps, and now you have to go the other way. So you're just, just stuck with your character going between transitions because you're not moving the controls because you don't know what the next camera shot's going to come from. Yeah. It was yeah. really weird and wonky. Yeah. Mm. Real wonkus. Wonkus. A real big wonkus. Uh, Snake of the Garden, thank you so much for a two euro dono. New Patreon tier, Eric Photoshop goofs on request. I mean, that's pretty much what these podcasts have become. Like, there's there's like a whole secret fourth, fourth uh, corner of the podcast that I don't even look at throughout the stream. And then I go back later and I'm like, oh no, I went to prison. <laughs> I don't remember that. In prison, with yeah. Yuji Naka? Yeah. With me and Yuji Naka? How, how could we? Uh, Eric, you're great. Uh, John Connor, thank you so much for a two Canadian dollar dono. No skip button for pause uh, for cutscenes makes replays horrid. Yeah, it's especially annoying on uh, if you're replaying something. And they're like, how, like, what do we, this should be like a DVD menu at this point. I should be able to just go wherever I want. Is it DVD menus? Yeah, I love this. Is it possible? Well, some games do that. Is it possible to where, like, if I have another save that the game detects that's like, oh, you've already beaten this game and you're doing another playthrough, you don't have to do the tutorial? Was that possible? Yeah, that's possible. Yeah, so many World games. Of Warcraft, just... World of Warcraft does that with mm. new patches. You complete one, the, be the intro to a patch on one character. When you come there on an alternate character, it says, would you like to skip the opening? Yeah, yeah. The or more of that, yeah. Instead of, like... Yeah. It's, I guess it's a, it's it's the trade off of these integrated tutorials that Yahtzee was talking about, or just allow players to skip it anyway. Some players are just cocky dickheads, and you know, then, like, then don't blame the game. How do I jump? I think if you skip and a tutorial, it should remove your ability to leave a Steam review. <laughs> sure. Be like, you can skip this. You could totally skip this, but also your opinion is now invalid. Likewise, uh, I, I miss old tutorial levels because, like, maybe maybe I did forget a thing or two, and I'd like to go run through the tutorial. Go through that course, course again, yeah. You know, yeah. or just see yeah. it in a sub menu in the menus of just like yeah a tutorial on how to do things, and there's just mm -hmm. like little little indicators on how to do stuff. Give me, yeah. Uh, Hroth eighty seven. Thank you so much for the dono. Cliff razors in Morrowind are the worst nuisance. What's that? Does anyone know Clifford Clifford razors? <laughs> Aren't they the, the little pterodactyl little things? Ah, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, ju judging by creatures. the video, I think that might I might be right. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, a, a, flying, a flying enemy in any game can quickly become a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth has a lot of flying enemies, and I'm like, my cloud is on the ground, and <laughs> you are so high up. How do I get up there? Mm -hmm. The irony. 
the irony that my name is Cloud. His name should have just been Shrub. Ground. Duh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dirt. Uh, SES Guru, thank you so much for the dono. Toggle zoom should be weapon specific. Toggle should be default for snipers. That's true. No one wants to hold that down for a sniper rifle, right? Ah, you weenie. That means you're camping. That's what you're doing. I've got my beans. I've got my fire. Right? I'm just here. <laughs> Whatever the rest of your game is doing, yeah. it should be doing that. Your controls and your systems should be consistent from the beginning to the end. This is what a lot of game endings do wrong, is they add a new mechanic right at the end, or like slightly skew with one, and it just completely breaks the flow of the game. If if from the beginning your game is toggle, and it's toggle for the rest of the game, that's fine. Just give me an option to switch back. But if some weapons do one thing and others do another, you're requiring the player to remember those things. And I think that's just wasted information. Just have it be a thing. Just one thing. And if players want to change it, give them the option to change it. I feel like a, like, like a way to avoid so much of this is, is empower the player. Give the player the tools to sort of make the little tweaks. That make their experience, um, yeah, stronger for for what they're designing. Give me GTA codes. Just give me GTA codes. Just give me long codes that I need to Add enter. Add flying the cars into every game. Yeah, that and let the, and have the codes all be various fruits we have to enter, like the Tarzan game. Tekken Seven, flying cars. Let's go. Everyone loves Tekken Seven. Uh, Dower Dodger, with one hundred American dollars. You know what president's on there? Big I don't boy. know which one. Ford, probably. Grant? Uh, Got to be one of the Grants. Uh, Dower Dodger, thank you so much for that dono. A dono for Eric being wonderful. I believe that was for uh, Eric photoshopping Yuji Naka uh, sharing a cell with me. Which, by the way, I think would be great because I played Battle in Wonder World and I have a lot of thoughts on that show, uh, on that uh, game. So, yeah, You could uh, talk the, during, your, um, yeah, during your incarceration. You could ask him. Yeah. We could, we could sort of uh, we could make a little uh, uh, a game design doc for Battle in Wonder World too. The balloting. Uh, Jackson Jewel with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Jackson. Final Fantasy sixteen. I switch controls to be more like Dark Souls. Final Fantasy seven's default to Square Smashing Simulator. Please let me change it. My thumbs hurt. Yeah, just let. Well, I, I don't. I don't understand. The, mm. Is it Jay? Is it hard to allow the player to customize their controls? Is that like a a thing that this can break the whole game? Like it feels like that should be an easy thing. No, it's you just know, like in, in the grand can... scheme of things. With anything accessibility, it's just low on the priority list, um, and it shouldn't be. You know, it's it's something that will take resources away from certain other aspects of the game, and uh, you know, producers and people who are looking to make money. Changing your UI or your controls to being remappable is not going to get you more money, but adding another DLC is. Or, you know, adding another thing that you can put on the back of the box that can entice people in is. So they just they get pushed down and down and down on the priority list, and mm -hmm. um, they shouldn't be because uh, I I actually think having your game be accessible and advertising that it is accessible is going to make all of the people who can't play thousands of other games come to play your game and support it. So yeah. I think accessibility options are an advertising point. Yeah, uh, unless that's your sell point of like. You have to be the most gifted uh, and able bodied gamer out there to get through this. I mean, it 2020 works for some. vision, it's or you the can't dark, dark souls, uh, yeah. easy mode. But yeah, honestly, the, that is mate. like instead of, oh, I'm going to have all these different game mechanics to appeal to different types of gamers, just appeal to different, like, um, uh, ability levels of gamers so, you know mm, you might yeah. you're know, like oh should i add a fishing mini game number one yes of course but you would probably get more by just like hey i could you could play on controller yeah there you go definitely yeah uh ba -ba -ba, thank you so much jackson the piss bandit stole our piss uh, with a five dollar dono, thank you so much, Piss Bandit. Two K owes me financial compensation for the hearing damage opening XCOM Two gave me. Also, card <laughs> games that are basically I can't believe it's not Magic. So um, all of them. Oh, no. <laughs> what came before Magic? Uh, Christmas cards. Okay. Christmas Hallmark. cards and solitaire, the big two. <laughs> yeah. What is like is Magic the Gathering like the the er? Card game, like all all card games, flow from basically like competitive. I think I I could be completely wrong. Like, correct me in the chat if you want. Um, but yeah, I think most of them stem from it. Competitive one v one or two v two card games. 
uh, with health values and you know damage and different qualifiers and effects on the cards. A lot of them stem from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they give their own spin. I think card games are really unique in the sense that nearly every card game I've played is trying to put a spin on it, have the thing. Um, and a lot of times it works, and a lot of the times it doesn't. I think Marvel Snap is a wonderful example of a game that does do stuff differently and um, is unique and interesting, but a lot of the times it is kind of just like, well, it's just magic, but it's got pyramids on it. Which card game am I calling out? I'll let you decide. Oh, no. Magic, magic, the the, the Sphinx Gathering? Yeah, yeah, Uh, that's the one. Devs do like magic. uh, my take a take a drink. I'm talking about Final Fantasy again. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has an amazing card game inside of it called Queen's Blood. That let me tell mm. you, if they don't spin this off into its own its own uh, standalone game, they're losing. Oh, out look what happened to Gwent. You can't do it. You're no, have, but they, add, will, add the they will they will store RPG to Gwent it while Gwent fails. Gwent trips That's over its own about feet. Gwent. <laughs> yeah, Gwent tripped over its own feet so that I could walk. There you go. Uh, thank you so much, Piss Bandit. Uh, Robo Knob the Snob with a five ninety nine euro dono. Thank you so much. Near Automata did that thing with the dialogue volume slider with subtitles appearing if you set the volume to zero. That's neat. That's cool. Wow, that's also <laughs> like a, a, a by writer, a default, or, right? By default, yeah. or a dev going, you you will take in this exposition, damn you. Yeah, <laughs> you will t- you will take this exposition about sad robots and you will enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you, Robo Knob. Uh, Early Berm with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much, Early Berm. Hey, Marty, are you a good cook? You remind me of my good cooking friends. That's very sweet of you to say. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm an eager cook, and I'm, I'm a fearless cook. I don't think I'm a good cook. I'll try anything. I'll, I'll try anything. Yeah, I'll try anything. I'll get some sharp knives and some hot heat, and I'll fucking I'll dig into any kind of food. Yeah, um, every meal. Whether is a I'm walk. good, well. whether I'm good, <laughs> that's just a walk. Then, so, so, uh, yeah, whether I'm good, I don't. I don't uh, do you need to put in your ten thousand hours to be good, like like Michael Jordan? Yeah, in basketball? yeah, ten yeah. k. Yeah, yeah. Master, you consider yourself Master a good cook, cook Frost? Um, no, like you, eager and fearless. Yeah. Um, and the things that I I pop out do taste well, and if oh. I get experimental with something, sometimes they don't. But daring, yeah. It's good yeah. traits to have. Do you cook? You guys got cooking over there in England? Uh, we've never. No, we're all emaciated over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I like. I cook a lot. Uh, I live with an ex Michelin star chef, so oh, he wow. usually does a lot of the cooking, and I've picked up a lot from him. Um, I again, I wouldn't say I'm considered. I would consider myself good, but I can cook specific meals quite well. I think like, well, I make a mean chili, but. Other than that, or Scoopies, uh, you're going to ask what they are. It's a whole thing. Um, I was never going to ask what Scoopies are because I definitely know what Scoopies are. But for a bunch of idiots in the audience who are Googling Scoopies right now, like I am, what are Scoopies? Scoopies are those, those, you know, the tortilla chips. A lot of people call them <laughs> other things. It's, uh, ba- it's basically a baked potato, but you, you cook them and then you take it out and you make like oh, yeah. effectively mashed potatoes with, in, in you know, whatever. Inside. And you put it back, and then you bake it again, and it's twice as oh, potato is what they call them, here. But I like scoopies better. We call them scoopies because you scoop them out. So sure. it's oh, it makes perfect sense. Not England. I call them scoopies. Not it's not like <laughs> oh. a, a <laughs> thing. Right. It's like I uh, tell Amy that we call the was it the fish fillet the McFishy. Yeah, the McFishy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Right? Right? That's true. Uh, I think in the grand scheme of second win, though, we, we we're probably in the upper in the upper half of cooking prowess because if you've ever watched a, a, a like a, a casey or a jesse or a nick stream they're wonderful but let me tell you i don't know what's going on there <laughs> i don't know what's going on there with their meats with their steaks what's yeah, going we, on we, we average out to average yeah, yeah exactly exactly uh thank you so much early bro. uh alex armstrong with a five dollar dono thank you so much ending tron three thousands and the quote it was all a dream twists are bad oh joy none of the choices consequences or sacrifices i made in the game matter yippee yeah, all choices matter. No, they don't. If they all matter, none of them matter. Yeah, you you did a that was back at the Escapist, right? You did your video about how that's all. Up yeah, I did a three part line. series on the illusion of choice in games mm-hmm. and how us as developers will trick people into making them think that what they're doing is impacting the game's narrative. Even games that do it really well, like you know, Disco Elysium, are still doing this. They just hide it extremely well. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, I think what I'm going to do is because I've been going back and remastering a lot of these episodes, um, 
I'm going to take all of the meat of all three of those episodes and condense them into one big video and remake it with me and Ludo and stuff like that and spruce it up. But yeah, you, oh, yeah. none of your choices matter. But at the end of the day, when you know, it was all a dream. Well, it's a video game. It's not real. So technically, it's always a dream. It's always all a dream. I mean, you can say that about movies, though. You can say that about life, really, if we think about it, you know. Listen, it, it's just all a dream, and we're going to wake up when we die. How do you not know when you die? You just don't wake up. At the back of a cart. Like, oh, Roger, Streisand awake. Your life, Marty, is a Barbara Streisand dream. You're going oh to wake up God, and be God, I'm getting Streisand! <laughs> you know what? After experiencing the spice this weekend, I wouldn't put it past me. I don't know no. what's going on. After yeah, seeing exactly. those worms come out of the sand, who knows what's real? Who knows? If you can ride a big worm, anything's possible. Pundabaya, thank you so much for being in the Green Gang for two months. Big secrets cost too much money nowadays. Uh, you always were going to meet Vincent and Yuffie in Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy uh, because all that animation and voice work cost. I, I think I might have just picked their next message. I don't even know if that was meant to be read. I just read it. But it is true that big secrets do cost money. And so I, I feel like the era of locking major things behind... Uh, locking major things that are possibly missable by a huge percentage of your audience feels like that's gone by the wayside, especially in AAA games. That'd be my yeah. marketing bread and butter. You know, I want like five years after my game's heyday, not 20 years after my game's heyday, somebody was like, dear God, I found this whole other half. Yeah. What's, I guess that's Castlevania, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, the night, isn't it? Oh my God, there's another castle on top of it. There's a whole other game under this game. <laughs> secrets, secrets are dead in games, right? And I think one of it is that that if you're going to do an entire area and have it be a secret, it's really expensive. Another thing is that the internet has ruined that. Like, there's, there's never going to be an age now of us kids going to the playground and trying to tell them each other that they found certain things in certain games and you having to go hunt for it and stuff like that because Google is exists and all information about a game is usually there before it's even come out. Um, Legitimately, that is one of, one of the things I like about our job, uh, giving us the privilege of being able to play certain things early, is that it all of that is just removed. And I gra granted, that's a self-control thing. It can all be removed yeah. if you just don't fucking do that but if you just go on the day final fantasy came out uh if you just went on youtube the ending's just there thumbnails are there yeah, spoiling yeah, yeah. everything like, I, even if you're not searching it you could be spoiled but like yeah when i played it the three weeks before it came out like nope there was just no one it's, no one was talking about it no one was playing it it was nice one of my pet peeves is if you if your game makes me tab out of your game and open a wiki to check what i have to do or what i need to do um, um your your game's dead to me it's like you failed. You failed in giving me the information I need to know what to do. Your game's um, dead to me. Your game's dead to me. Um, and like I complain about this, to be honest, I'm being a bit hypocritical because one of my favorite games of all time, Hollow Knight, makes you do this a lot because sure. it's it's so maze like, and you you might need to look up what the next progression point is. Um, but yeah, it's it's so hard to do them, and I miss that age of you know being told a code for GTA. And getting to see what wacky stuff it did, or uh, you know, was, wanting to was, buy little books of codes and stuff. I was gonna yeah. say, um, what was it? Augmented reality games. This don't know, sort of come back in fashion. So like Inscription, mm. there's actually a game within the game within the game that takes yeah. place in real life. It is like a big secret Easter egg hunt. Yeah. Um, and and, and it's coming out now that like a few more games actually did have these uh, secret features that you'd have to find in more of like a Pokemon Go kind of way, right? Where you just like actually go out into the real world and, and you need to find a, a tailor who understands what this notation means so that you can get the next clue, you know? And it's, uh, it's been kind of, kind of wacky. It's, it's interesting there, but I, I don't think it'll catch on in that same way because I'm very much in, like, I, with, with Jay here, if, like, if I have to tab out of your game, like, I might not come back. <laughs> just, yeah. I want it I'll in the game. Else. Yeah. There's just so much competing for our attention and time yeah. that, yeah. If you lose I mean, me, you might not get me again. What what Frost was saying there is really interesting as well because it's another thing that you can't do. So say you you gather information and they say, well, you have to go to this area to get the next bit of information. You have to travel up the mountain to talk to the hag to get the information to come back down. Well, there's two scenarios here. One is that uh, you don't want to do that. So you look it up and you get the information. So now the player has that information, but the game will not let you progress 
until you do uh, do those things. Yeah. Or it allows you to just skip it and use the information to skip everything. Both of those scenarios are bad. Like, either the yeah. game makes you play through something you didn't want to do, or you skip content, and then you feel like none of it mattered anyway. Yeah. So making the player gather information just ruins it. It's, um, yeah, it's so hard to do secrets. They're, they are dying in games, but games like Tunic that are built around yeah. it um, were so successful at it. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's an episode, the death of secrets in games. Oh, yeah. man, uh, those Tunic secrets? Oof. Yeah, those Tunic ones are fucking out of control. That's <laughs> right. Man. Yeah, Tunic, Void Stranger, Inscription. Oh, Void Stranger, uh, I'll write that down. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Void Stranger's a great one. Uh, the one is... Uh, Paul with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much, Paul. Oh my God, I didn't know we were friends, Jim. Mate, Skyrim sucks. Uh, I believe that was sent when you mentioned your friend uh, will not liking. Yeah, yeah. The second a game comes out, or the second if the second you throw a unskippable cutscene, just mm. fucking bounces from the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, also, just quit a cheeky little Skyrim sucks. I don't know where that came from. I mean, if you see, if I mean, you don't I like Skyrim, you just haven't modded it enough. Like I've put in so many mods that it is it's essentially Doom 2016. If you but... don't like Skyrim, it's because you haven't played a completely. <laughs> you haven't Frankenstein it exactly. enough. Yeah, you haven't. Skyrim could be anything. It could be Mario. Like, it could be anything. You haven't modded it enough. Simply put, I just think we need to put some respect on the Rod God's name. I don't like that that uh, that Starfield has been diminishing the good word. It doesn't Bobby count. Rod God Howard. Uh, doesn't I don't, count? I don't think it counts. No, no. It's like when Lil Wayne did rock a rock album instead of rap. It's like that, this doesn't diminish your your rap abilities, but that was that was bad. <laughs> well, we gotta, we gotta see what happens when you get dragons back. Yeah, this, it's, this it's very. I'm pretty sure a lot of a lot of people are just like Todd. I believe in you so long as it's Elder Scrolls. If you if you flub that one, then I'm like, all right, the Todd. That's a big gone. one. That's yeah. a big one. That's really funny. Uh, uh, and just as a, again, just uh, reiterating, I don't play any Bethesda games. I, I just like calling him Todd the Rod God because someone, one of, I think Frost might have called him that and I found it. Me funny. and Amy, it's called God yeah. Howard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought it was very funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I kept saying it. Uh, Robonob with another 1199 euro dono. Thank you so much. Max Payne 3 was sinful as hell when it came to interrupting gameplay with cutscene. Open a door, it's a cutscene. Kill a dude, a cutscene. Hate that game. By the way, absolutely loving Design Delve. Cheers. Thank you so much. And, and I that agree. was a real that was a real negative that that spun into a positive at the end. That was nice. Hey, that that kind of juxtaposition really lifted my spirit. So maybe yeah. that was the intention. There yeah, unlike Max Payne, who just takes <laughs> a lot of pills because he's sad. Just I like, thought Max Payne 3 fucking ruled. Let me be I, I really like Max Payne 3, but it yeah. does have a lot of bloody cussing. That game it. is grimy as shit. You need to take a shower after that game. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, SPS Guru, thank you so much for a two euro dono. Metal armor that bends. I hate it. Clipping? Clipping? How could you? Um. Uh, Urban N with uh, 50 Polish Swody. Thank you so much. Oh, another one. Surprise QTEs. Plot happens. You lean back to reach for a drink or a snack, and then they have you press X. So you grab the controller and panic, and everything ends up on the floor. My soup. My, My soup. Man, man, My soup gamer soup. Is important. Important. The, down, it's one thing that developers miss in action games, that downtime oh. in difficulty curves is unbelievably important to process information and to like have a break. Cutscenes used to be that, but QT QTEs just ruin that entirely. You can't sip your soup. You can't have a crouton, you know. You've yeah. got to press X to take all the dragon's balls. Listen, uh, Denron the dragon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From Dragon Ball? Um, let me... I was, I was, I was like you. I was, I was walking blindly through this world thinking QTEs were bad. I was like you a year ago. I don't think they're bad. <laughs> like Asura's Wrath and I is a change. And then I played Asura's Wrath and everything changed because it's the sickest shit ever and no game is ever going to top it. And let me just, I think all games should become. That's cute. God of War. The God of War was doing that. Not the new no, one, no. but the old one was doing no, that. No, but there was too much gameplay. That was the problem. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like Asura's Wrath, the gameplay takes you by surprise, not the quick yeah. time. Because you're this, yeah. you're like <laughs> eating one I'll hand, other, control. other controllers like pressing, smashing O or circle. <laughs> and then it's like, oh God, it's a fighting bit. You're telling me yeah. you're playing Azura's Wrath and you're doing these sick ass cutscenes, um, QTEs. Then the gameplay starts, and that's when you pick up the And then I get yeah. angry, and I'm like, how do I skip this? I'm like your, your friend, where I'm like, let me skip <laughs> like, this and get back to it. Yeah, let me skip this horrible rail fighting. <laughs> yeah. Bit. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, so that's great. Mm. Um, Jewel Ra with another two euro. Thank you so much. Dark Souls slash Elden Ring NPC quests. I'm too dumb. I mean, those are ones where it does feel like you need to open a wiki because those can be so like opaque, and you're like, what? What did this character yeah. want me to do? Also, there's no log of this information, so I don't know where they said they were going to go. And also, knowing it's going to take you like. If I try to do this myself, it's going to take me five hours and I'm going to get, like, one bare ass as a reward. I'll mm -hmm. just look it up and just skip the middleman and do it in ten minutes, you know. I'll just skip the middleman and Google bare ass. Yeah. yeah. I'll just find my own bare ass. <laughs> bare ass straight, location, go. Straight to the... Ah, <laughs> many in my area. <laughs> right <from> the... <laughs> All right, tinfoil hat time. Uh -oh. I reckon developers are doing this so they can get more AdSense on their websites on their wikis I, right see, trying that to was that was me when um because zombies black on black ops always used to be a little lorry right a little mm -hmm. like dark souls mm -hmm. in that way but then it became yeah. really intensive and i was like i feel like them and ali g or ali a whatever his name i feel like they they do this they're in cahoots because he'll be the only one who actually somehow knows what's going on in this story all the traffic goes here and he's like the biggest cod shield that ever be and that goes straight back to call of duty and i'm like all right Vardy Vidya is the in the mafia in the from some mafia that are making know, money off each other. Yeah, he is Miyazaki Cottage actually. Industry. Yeah, uh, I like you said Ali G, and I was like the Sasha Baron Cohen character. No, yeah, no, it's Ali A. You're right. <laughs> Ali G. I was like, wow, I didn't realize you loved those guys. Love the big transit fan. Uh, early Hold on. What? Jim, Jim the Fly. A service wrath with my old schoolmate Liam just screaming angrily for hours. You went to school with Liam. The voice actor, Jim the Fly. Oh, oh, was that by Liam? Liam, <laughs> I thought you were just literally talking about Liam. Like, oh, I played this with my buddy uh, Liam. Liam. Uh, yeah. Talking about literally Liam O'Brien. Yeah, Liam, Liam O'Brien, because that's him screaming the whole whole. Way. Yeah, he's just, he's wow. very angry in that game. Wow, he's just extremely that. mad. I feel like I'm. I'm... Whereas in uh, near, he's very he's he's fine because he's a book. He's a grimoire, if you will. Mm, uh, which you say, I think just a fancy name for a book. He was a year behind you. I'll tweet a pic. Let Jim the Fly. Look at that. Who's the most famous person? Did you guys go to school with anyone famous? Amazing. No. Oh, no. So, for for in a bad way for my school, I think the most famous person to come out of it is now me, which is a very low bar. That's real. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. My graduating class it might be me, and that's extremely sad. Yeah, yeah. and I feel sorry for my school. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess closest is like um. The in the area, the Shmo Yoho boys, they came out of that area, and Michael Vick came out of that area. I love Michael Vick. Yeah, so that's, that's about it. He did. He's uh, what's so, uh, what's he's his so name? Good man. What? Ah, oh, Chris Martin, lead singer of the Coldplay. Coldplay. It, his hmm. he's from my hometown, and his dad runs a caravan selling park in my hometown. Does his dad need to work? Yeah, it's called Martins. They they sell caravans. <laughs> that's funny. Or motorhomes, if you don't know what they are. I I was thinking like a wagon caravan, so I'm glad you actually basically yeah, basically <laughs> you pull it along. An, yeah, it's yeah, an RV park. Well, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so early berm with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, early berm. Hey, Ludo's dad is Ludo around? Yes, she is. Let me grab her. Uh, oh. We were uh, there. Were, there was a possibility of Ludo. Of a Ludo cam on this, but Ludo is a, a very transient uh, uh, creature. Free spirited. Free spirited, unlike uh, unlike the lazy toffee. Um, <laughs> Ludo's also just like, look at Ludo. And she is. Look at Ludo. Ludo. Looks like an absolute doll, like an actual doll of a doll. Look at Ludo. That's great. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, no worries. It's all good. I'm sure they'll. Oh, that's funny. That's no worries. Worry, no, no. No. <laughs> Here she is. There you go. No. I like that. In order to get, listen, Ludo is so special that we needed a whole rigmarole. We needed to literally just restart the whole pod to be like, we gotta, yeah, we yeah. gotta roll it up. Play the ad again. I'll do the intro, the spiel again. <laughs> um, the real star is here now. She's the, here. The real star. What a diva showing up fucking an hour and 40 minutes late after call time. Uh, Ludo, you're wonderful. 
Udo, you're wonderful. Uh, SVS Guru, thank you so much for the five euro dono. I still don't understand how you tolerate shops not posting prices with tax included. That's uh, who's. Uh, it's not a choice of mine. I would very I'd... much like to see five bucks. Okay, that's it. My yeah. first time visiting America, I was unbelievably pissed off, irrationally. Actually, no, rationally. It's rather, it's rather <laughs> rational. Okay, in England, we have something that you guys have, which is like one pound stores, like. Poundland and stuff like that, where everything in there. Oh is no, pound. we have Poundlands here. We yeah, yeah, you have, have dollar, like here. Dollar Tree and shit like that. Oh I no, I was like, I was like I'm gonna get some bargains. I'm gonna get some headphones that break my ears. I'm gonna get some cheap sweets. And I went in, just picking stuff up, and I was like, ooh, all of this, five dollars for the bargain. Went up, and they were like, oh, that's nine dollars sixty-seven. I was like, what are you playing at? This is a Dollar Tree. What? They were like, oh, it tax. Why isn't tax included? Oh, because it isn't. I was like, your country's backwards, and I got on a plane. I'm never I'm going to say that. I'm going to be moving there soon, but whatever. God, I, yeah, <laughs> what, if you hate it so much, why don't you move here? Find, yeah. find the uh, one state that actually prices everything properly. Okay, yeah. we've been discussing this in the back end of where I'm going to move, and that is going to be the deciding factor, if they include tax in their prices. Yeah. Uh, is there, I mean, we've got a, a wide audience here. Someone's probably in a state of like, yeah, they price accordingly. Tax included. Florida has... <laughs> No income tax, is that right? Because a lot of athletes love going to Florida because and the old billionaires, yeah. You make you make more money. I think based on it. Delaware. There you go. Delaware. Crossing Delaware. Shout out to Washington. New Hampshire. You know what I learned? Place. You want to know a presidential fact I learned this weekend? I love talking about Taft. Taft is a great president. He was huge. One of the reasons I love him. Stuck in the tub. Taft went to a baseball game once. And it was like, oh, the president's at the baseball game. He needed, like, you know, two-thirds through the game, he needed to get up. He needed to stretch a little bit. He stood up and stretched, and everyone else in the stadium was like, well, the president is stretching, so we should stretch too. That is how the seventh inning stretch was created, because Taft just needed to get some feeling back in his legs and get the blood flowing. Wow. Incredible. Thank you, Taft. That's that's why. I'm not sourcing it, but I'm just telling you, that's the truth. There you go. No one Google it. In case it's no not one Google this, just in no case. one Google it in case it's not the truth. Uh, Red Dwarf with a ten dollar dono. Oh my god, look at look, look at Ludo. Ludo's so strong. Uh, if you're only listening strong. to this, if you're only listening to this on one of our podcast services, uh, thank you so much. And also, you're missing video of of Strong Dog. Yeah, strong Dog. Oh God. Uh, uh, Red Dwarf. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm one of the few that dislikes how Souls tells a story. I'm not dumb. I promise, and I have no idea what the story of a Souls game is on my own. Vati video is the only way I have a clue of what's going on. It does ask a lot. It you asks know, it. It asks a lot out of you. If, if nothing else, it's kind of nice because it, it almost. I'm glad it creates a space for someone like Vati to exist. Because mm-hmm. I th- I don't think I'd enjoy it as much if it hadn't been for like oh this this fella did a little lore video and now it's like well yeah. I'm gonna go back in and play through knowing no, the context it. that's cool yeah and mm. I don't think I want every game to be like that but no. I like that there's this 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 niche of it um you know Def- definitely not indie games that try to do this I'm sorry but you're not gonna get a body. You're not going to get a Vati video that's dissecting no. your game. You de- tell me your story. Stop trying yeah. to hide it and all these symbols and whatnot. Like, because they weren't, I don't think FromSoft was doing it with the intention of, oh, maybe we'll build a cottage industry that acts as free promotion for <laughs> our games. Like that wasn't their intention, whereas that's how it feels like uh, games that try to try to mimic that personally. Uh, Robin out the snob, thank you so much with a five ninety nine euro dono. Almost all sins you listed were featured in last year's Fort Solace. Unironically worse than Gollum, insultingly bad. Wow, that's been on my list. That was the one starring Troy Baker and uh, uh, what's the guy's name? The guy who played Arthur Morgan in uh, Red Dead Two. It's like a very cinematic walkabout. Shit's happening on a space station mm. kind of game. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know anything about it. It came out like at a busy time. I think it came out, might have came out right around the time uh, we ended up not working at the Escapist and working here instead, which is mm-hmm. understandable. The event. Uh, yeah. The event. The event. <laughs> the event we do not mention. Uh, the Brain Sturgeon with a six euro dono. Thank you so much. Frost, did you hear the story about the huge Eve scam? Guy stole billions of ISK from a major corp claiming to have dreadnought blueprints. Possible Chronicle. Again? Dear God. 
We can't eve I, twice. You can't I, eve in one I, series. Can I, can I double dip on the eve? My thing is also, I, I'm slow to jump on things whenever I feel like there's a wave coming. Right? Sure. I, I feel like, yeah, just give it a few months. It's going to be something even more preposterous. Yeah, That's yeah. What I want, you you got to wait until everyone involved has died. And so that you know that there's no more updates to the story. Yeah, and no one can like correct me either if they're all dead. Yeah. 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 So, so if you want to use that TAF one, you could you could use that TAF one if you want. There you go. Yeah. The presidential Just, Chronicle. Again, don't don't Google it in case it's not true. Uh, Snake of the Garden with a two. Euro Dono. Thank you so much, Snake. Your thoughts on speedos on men? Sexy or nah? I'm uh, wearing three pairs right now, baby. Three. Three of them. Yeah, it's, three does. Uh, I've got some on my feet. They act as good socks if you wear them just right. Incredible. Yeah, guess you walk, we'll let you walk on water. European, very European. It is very right. European, yeah. Being I, a European, you know. That's why I personally, I, I personally, I prefer like, uh, like, like if we're going to go in the small zone, like a nice, like a nice brief, like looking at uh, uh, like uh, Sean Connery coming out of coming out of the water in Bond or, or even Daniel Craig coming out of the water. I like that. I like that. But listen. It, you gotta, you, you gotta know. Like you, you just have to be like, before the beach, I did like three hundred press ups, five hundred sure. squats, and I'm also incredibly well endowed. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. it's a demanding piece of garment to to wear. I couldn't yeah. pull it off. No. Or if you have confidence, if you have pure confidence and you rock it, who am I to say no? I'm not gonna yuck your yum. Uh, thank you so much, Snake Lampy with a five pound dono. Thank you so much, Snake. No, don't tempt Eric to make a photo of the guys wearing budgie smugglers. Budgie smugglers. That's what they call uh, speedos. Budgie smugglers. You're smuggling budgie smugglers and, and what, what, you, scoopies? what was the name of your yeah. potatoes? Yeah, it's a little bird. It's a you're wearing budgie smugglers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Oh man. Uh, and Snake with another two euro dono. Thank you so much because Lampy is a scampy plus always makes us laugh. That sounded like mm. a little rhyme. That was beautiful. Uh, Humane Shield with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Does Balan Wonderworld count as an unforgivable sin? I don't think so because there are some good ideas in Balan. I experienced Balan foot, uh, snout to trout or what, what do you call it? Like front to back? Snout to trout. Snout to trout. <laughs> From my nose to my fish. I, I experienced the whole snout thing. to trout. And there are some good ideas in there. So no, it is not unforgivable. It was not executed well, and the game is bad, but there was there was some good. And you know what they say, Mr. Frodo? There's still some good in the world and it's worth fighting for. Sam Weiss. My favorite game. golem quote, yeah. Yeah. yeah my favorite it's like he says quote. something like, I feel like butter spread too thin or something. <laughs> Uh, too little I, brother butter spread over too much bread. Yeah, know. that's good. That's I good. got a bloody Lord of the Rings tattoo like three days ago. Uh, of what? Saruman oh, the, the Wise. Sh the, sh the shards of Narsil. The shattering of Narsil. Hey, hey. Yeah, look at yeah. that! It's a blade. Hell yeah! yeah. Good tat. Mm. A plus tat. Uh, Chilihead Gaming with a two euro dono. Thank you so much. Crafting arrows in games like Tomb Raider. Yeah, that's just become like a thing now. I don't know. It's just you don't find it. You find the things that you combine to make the things. And I guess it's like gives you a little bit of uh, player agency in terms of, well, I found this wood. Do I use it for arrows or do I use it for sticks to, to create distractions? Gun. Yeah, exactly. Like res the Resi remakes were the same thing of like, okay, you have these different combinations of, of, uh, crafting materials do you combine them to make handgun bullets or combine them to make uh, acid rounds for your grenade launcher um i guess that's just another a small modicum of of uh player agency but yeah it's just kind of become a default and i'm not 100 percent sure why yes hmm. uh sebastian with a five dollar don't know thank you so much sebastian is it too much to ask you have the uh to match the escortee's place in an escort mission. I hate constantly running ahead and stopping. It feels like this might be the one people are mad at the most. I think what's I funny agree. is um, it's fine if, like, you know what, I'll just go on ahead to the area because the the volume is, like, the dialogue is still just playing overhead. But yeah. the one where the further you get away, the quieter it gets. And you're like, damn, you really want me to, like, stay yeah, here, yeah. doubling and tripling down on me being near this guy. Okay. You need to have it. Like uh, yeah. Have the have the character start screaming the further away I get. It should. <laughs> the Why are you going, shouting bud? Their lines. Yeah. Um, Love it. yeah, I don't know. That seems, I don't know. Certain things just seem like, well, this is the way things are. So, um, 
Like mm-hmm. some of those trends, you're like, I don't know where this came from, but this is just uh, this is just where we are now. I don't know why. It's really no way to know. Uh, Hunter Roge gifted five second win memberships over in YouTube to Lev, to Aaron, to Huma, to the Fez Hat, and to Tim. Hunter Roge. Thank you so much. Uh, remember, we've upgraded our uh, YouTube memberships. Uh, we have a $5 uh, ad-free tier. Ooh, I don't know what the tiers are. One is ad-free podcast and one is ad-free premium videos, maybe? I actually don't know what the tiers are, so I shouldn't have even mentioned that. I wish I didn't mention it. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll break that with a quote from Nick in the chat, which, which is the typo I'm hoping. Hell from DC and the land of adventures now. Nick, you had one job, and it was just to put the fifth letter in hell. That is that like DL, is that hell DLC? You got you got to <laughs> put one. Le- you got You got to pay to get the last O. Uh, Captain President with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much, Captain President. Support for Waldorf's and Waldorf salads. Speaking of, we mm. get to the we get to the Waldorf's, and Nick has been summoned. Uh, Nick has a Waldor. I don't know if you heard about his Waldor, Jamie. What isn't on doors always on walls? That's you what would have thought are. that that's what we all think, but he has specific wall doors. So, um, I also like that okay. Nick was like so busy that he just typed that and he couldn't say anything. He's like, I couldn't say anything else. We got it. Yeah, and then I'm gone. It's hell. He's fighting off demons. He's fighting, he's fighting off demons. Yeah, it could be Mars. Who knows? Uh, Captain President again with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much, Captain President. Games should have skippable tutorials and cutscenes simply for replay value. Mm. I agree. I don't know. I agree. It, it it feels like there's no reason not to. One start pauses it, and then when you're paused, you can choose to hit another button to skip it. Seems that simple. I don't know why we're not doing that. Uh, Lampy with a two pound dono. Thank you so much. Games without a quote Marty mode are the greatest of sins. I <laughs> agree. A Marty mode is when the game is just easy as piss, and that there's no there's no fear of dying. Even though I you can still die in Marty modes. There's ways. There's absolutely ways to die in a Marty mode. <laughs> oh, I found ways, says mine. Oh, I found ways. To Need die. tension somehow. I say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> says impossible to die on the splash screen. And Marty's like, try me, bitch. <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta, you guys gotta patch that out. It is possible to die. Yeah. I've, I've found a way. <laughs> uh, Lampy with another ten pound dono. Thank you so much. A sin I see people do is remapping controls as soon as they open the game. At that point, they have no idea how much controls will work with the game mechanics. Then complain that the controls don't feel good. That feels like salting uh, before you've yeah. tasted the food, right? Oh, uh, like oh, you have a salt problem, you. Yeah, yeah. awful yeah. thing. Um, I'll always try. Uh, for a while, I was doing the immediately get rid of motion blur and you know the usual stuff that people definitely don't like in their video games. Uh, until I think it was Evil West, I'd gotten through quite a bit of it, and it was until I went to go record for the three MR that I was like, "Oh, I had motion blur on this whole time, and it was actually quite good." Oh wow, interesting. Yeah, you just didn't know. they seem to be getting better. That's kind of what I like to do. If I, if there's something I don't like, every five years I'm like, "Okay, have we like figured this out, or is it still stupid? Have we progressed past this yet? <laughs> if we, yeah. if we, have yeah. we solved this problem yet? Yeah, some things uh, no." <laughs> No, with a lot, with a lot of things though, for me, honest. Mm. Uh, Ninja with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much. Wanted to bring to your attention to Love Live School Idol Festival Two, crap live service game, notable only because they announced the servers were shutting down in the same tweet, announcing the launch date. Yeah, we talked about that on That's a stream so good. a little while ago, and it was uh, apparently it was uh, like the game had been out in Asia, and they were contractually obligated to release it in the West. And by the time the Western version was done, they had already been like, "Yeah, we're 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 actually getting rid of this game." Oh, and so uh, they were like, "the The game is is coming out in March, but also the game is ending in April." So yeah, it, was, it just doubles down on the idea of of these live service games are going the way of the food industry, and yeah. that is sort of like the, the that pop up diner that's just like we're here for five months, and then the Shrek ketchup is leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the Shrek. Um. Yeah, it's uh, like what that, that Dark Souls one you went to or something. Oh yeah, we're yeah we had like the 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 deep black uh katsu sauce and like when you went to the bathroom at night it was like what happened? <laughs> I just Miyazaki swamped. I just absolutely Miyazaki swamped. Uh, Jeremy Gola with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Frost. Have you ever made uh, or had mole sauce with peanut butter instead of chocolate? Every other Mexican family I've asked thought I was kidding. 
I've seen those. I have. I have seen those. But personally, I don't like either. You know, I, and at that point, it's kind You're of like, a a, yeah, it's not. It's not a mole. Then it's like, well, I guess it's. It's. I still like it, but it's not of the. Oh, I must have one. Sure, uh, but yeah, sure. I've seen. I've seen the the nut based one as well as the chocolate gotcha. one. Uh, da, 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 da. Cool. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Alex Armstrong with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Alex. The only time pre-animated takedowns are fun are the ones for Doom Four, Resident Evil Four, and Yakuza. I never get tired of those awesome moments. Pre-animated takedowns. I like pre-animated takedowns in like a Batman game. Like the Arkham ones feel good, right? Spider-Man pre-animated takedowns feel good. I like the ones that end an encounter. Like you can only pre-animate to take down the last guy instead of just like okay, seven gotcha, weak foes, gotcha. and I'm about to pre-animate yeah. all of you. Line up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, there you go. Pre animated takedowns. Is that like a pre canned cocktail kind of? Yeah, something like that. I, yeah. I think it was. What's that game? That bad game Casey loves. Wanted. Worlds of Avium? No, Wanted Dead. Oh, Wanted Dead. Yeah, yeah. Where he was saying that it <laughs> has pre animated, but you could like line them up and it would actually knock them down or some other yeah, system. Yeah. It was a very interactive way of doing it. So you'd want to get as many into stagger before you, you started the chain. And I was like, that sounds that sounds interesting. See, there you go. Yeah, it's fun ways. Uh, only a couple more super chats left. Uh, Snake of the Garden with a two euro dono. Thank you so much. Adding quote gameplay to story press F to pay <laughs> respects. Yeah. Oh, God. Stuff where you're like, why, why are we even, why are we doing this again? To bring up Final Fantasy again, that definitely had some moments where it was like, you need to turn a valve, and in order to do so, you need to hold both triggers several times, and there will be resistance on the triggers because of the dual sense. And I'm like, why doesn't he just turn the valve? Like, I don't, I don't need to like. Finally, I will experience what it's like for a soldier first class to turn this valve. That's like, that's not one of the, one of the magical things I needed to know in life. That's mm. why I play Call of Duty. It's not about you. To pay all the respects. Also, just if you're going to do that, don't be a coward and just make your whole game a QTE. I don't want a half measure. That's my thing with QTEs. You need to go whole ass. You need to put your entire ass in there. Commit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Alex Armstrong with a $2 dono. Thank you so much, Alex. Marty, I demand you get a mojito and party tonight. (laughs) Eric had that ready. Goddamn. That was incredible. Oh, my. (laughs) That was was wonderful. That was was Uh, quick. Uh, I'm I'm going to be on uh, Hidden Gems later tonight with Jess, so I cannot mojito. I have no mouth, and I will not mojito. You're, you're, the, you're in the passenger seat. You know, a... No, I'm hosting. Wait, do we have, do oh, we have rules about not drinking and drinking and streaming? I fucked up. Only if you're driving. Only if you're driving. No, I mean I, I'll do I'll I'll but a mojito like needs muddling. I'm not gonna muddle on the stream because I know what I Eric make, does. Make it. On I know screen. what Eric does, and if I do this on a stream a bunch, Eric's gonna <laughs> take that and he's gonna <laughs> fucking. <laughs> He's gonna put it everywhere. No, no, show up, there. show up to Hidden Gems with a like margarita and like during a very serious cutscene, lick at the salt rim. <laughs> We're playing Abzu, which is a sea based game, so I would oh, need God. some sort of like. Well, I guess that's like tropical, tropical cocktails, right? It's just which water. Is kind of yeah. water <laughs> with, with a salt rim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Jewel Rao with a two euro dono. Thank you so much, Jewel. The main character in Atomic Heart quipping yuck. I feel like everyone's just forgotten about Atomic Heart, if I'm being honest. Like, I think people... Oh, I remember right now. Just... Yeah, he was a bit weird about it, wasn't it? Yes. He... It's very... But it's funny because if you... If, if you justify... Um, if your narrative in the end is like, your character's brain damaged, I let everything go. Because, like, hair clipping, I'm like, he's brain damaged? Is in his head? They even have moments where he's deluded. He's going through like these weird moments. I'm like, oh, that makes total like if this is janky. If this character makes no sense, if the dialogue it's just my character's interpretation of the world right now. I love it. It's like a get out of jail free card for any yeah. every weird bullshit. There's a part where you're just in this dreamy scape, collecting cherries, big floating cherries like a Pac Man. I was like, that's so odd, but yeah, he's got he, he's he's essentially brain dead and okay. brought back. So like, he suffered a head injury. Everyone be kind to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Lampy with a 10 pound dono thank you so much my two favorite Marty mode deaths Trico killing him at the start of a cutscene and Trico just leaving during a puzzle and never coming uh, back resulting in a soft lock I'm replaying The Last Guardian which yeah. is a game that uh, I haven't played it since it first came out and I feel exactly the same where the game has incredible highs and the game has like baffling lows uh, Wow! like when the game works it is like among the most meaningful interactive things I've ever experienced in a game. 
and then it doesn't work and it is like this fucking dog this is the stupidest goddamn dog i've ever seen in my life i'm not sorry i'm not talking about luda i'm talking about the bird dog yeah i was gonna say well she's too busy humping this blanket so sure as 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 one is wont to do uh it is it is baffling but i guess again like quote unquote realistic uh in terms of like well this is a, a huge animal so uh, you know oh is that is that trico the big yeah trico's the big the, bird the guardian okay. yeah the big guardian the titular last guardian um yeah real dick uh great game seven out of ten uh dale mallows with a five dollar dono thank you so much dale i am back say silly wimple for my pleasure there you go silly wimple silly wimple, silly wimple. is that a british thing is that like a baked potato twice baked potato no i just said it in a dumb accent um i thought your accent was beautiful cheers uh thank you so much dale captain president gifted 50 i didn't even know there was 50 i didn't know i, I didn't know numbers go that high everyone's I green know numbers go that high. i'm yeah, not gonna read them all out like, Soon, I mean, everyone, I, I, every sub is going to have a, a membership soon. Thank you so much. Uh, to TSP, to Dean, uh, you know who the third one was? To me. I got a membership. Oh, my God. You know what I'm going to do with it? <laughs> sell on it? I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I might Mojito. try to sell it. Mojito. Do you think I could sec- second-hand it? Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Second-hand second 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 the membership. Second-wind it? Beautiful. Uh, Captain President, thank you so much. That's incredibly kind of you. Uh, Alex Armstrong, $5 dono. Here's a gaming feature that should come with future games. You win the game by paying money to second wind. Oh, no. Pay to I play. Don't, I don't allow The that. game of life. You pay get good win. content. So yeah. You win. Think about it. Pay to spray. Ren Momo. Mm-hmm. $3 dono. Looking forward to watching this later. Designed Elf. 100%. Hell yeah. Thanks, baby. I feel like we got, it's got to be 90 because you always got to have room to grow. It's very true. Unless, Unless you're going to like 100% too. mode, well, like 101 mode, which is what yeah. games do. Uh, Design Delph yeah. has been 100%. Design Delph's been 100%. Cold Take's been 100%. Everything's been 100%. We've been cooking, we've been cooking with gasoline. Uh, and that's it. We did it. We did a whole podcast. We made it. God dang. I'm really, I'm really proud of us. Uh, as, we, as we wrap up, uh, uh, let, me, let me tell you our, our schedule for the rest of the week. It's going to be a little, little, little wonky. Obviously, a lot of folks out for the next two weeks. Um, so stuff like, well, like we won't have a firelink podcast this week. Obviously there will not be a Yahtzee tries this week because there is no titular Yahtzee to try. Uh, however, we'll have stuff like, uh, hidden gems later tonight at 6 PM playing Abzu. Uh, tomorrow, I think we're going to be setting up a cheeky little final fantasy stream just to just, I'll, I'll do I'll mostly be a vibe check. I'll just be going around the world being like, I like this room. Let's, let's, let's go into this room. I'm going to show you why I like this table. I'd eat gazpacho in this room. Yeah. We're <laughs> top five gazpachos in the game. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you guys will have a, a sponsored stream on uh, Wednesday, so we'll, we'll be having streams every day. But the uh, the schedule will be coming in a little bit, a little bit hot and loose. Um, so we, but we appreciate that. Uh, Jay, what do you have going on besides uh, trying to to uh, capture that last guardian behind you? Um, what I have going on? So I just had a design of uh, release last Friday on health bars and how they might be ruining games. So check that out if you haven't. Uh, my next episode could be one of a few things. Uh, I haven't fully settled on it. I wrote half a script today, but now some things we've spoke about in this podcast have changed my mind and I might make something else. Um, we yeah. shall see. But yeah, uh, we've got a lot of things cooking in the background. Going to be heading to GDC soon to make some wonderful content uh, along with Nick omar matt and yahtzee uh so look forward to that we're gonna have multiple episodes of uh whatever we do there (laughs) and also on the topic of podcasts we are currently working on a game dev podcast uh with me and two other wonderful hosts so uh yeah that's currently cooking so look forward to that in the future but that's all me excellent Frost. what do you got going on I oh, see here. Uh, review went up for Skull and Bones. As we are now shifting to Cold Take on the Mondays and, and uh, trying out newer things and whatnot. It's going to be a good one next week. Well, you can expect a little Bellatro, a little card game based cilantro, the illegal gambling game. Oh, man. That's going to be an exciting one to do. But yeah, go yeah, watch They've that. gotten in some trouble because they said it's promoting real gambling, which it's not, which is very ridiculous. Uh, if anything, it saved me from gambling. Yeah, I was going to go to the casino. I was like, I'm going to play a couple before I go. And I, I was there all night. There you go. Cured me. <laughs> I <laughs> cured you. With my coke habit with meth. Cured you of your woes. Oh. 
Um, cool. Yeah. And like I mentioned, I'll be back uh, 6 p.m. Central tonight uh, playing Abzu for uh, Hidden Gems. I think uh, most of our streams this week will probably be at that, that noon slot especially with Jamaica, because that's a nice, not too late for him um, kind of thing. So expect maybe that Final Fantasy stream at noon tomorrow, that sponsored stream uh, noon on Wednesday, probably some some more surprises. So, um, But yeah, thank you guys uh, so much. Thank you to everyone who uh, watched, everyone who donated. Thank you so much, uh, everyone who supported us. Anyone who's listening on uh, Spotify or your uh, podcast services of choice, thank you so much. You know what? Give us a rating. Give us 10 stars. On your hope. Yeah, write a nice mm-hmm. comment. Rank rank the top five fish. It's like a good tie five. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so for uh, Jamate, for Frost, and uh, for producer Eric, this has been Marty. This has been Windbreakers episode number 13. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoons, and we'll see you later tonight for Hidden Gems. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.